Hello, hello, hello. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to the back of my RV, my little crafty space. Happy Saturday. I'm so happy to see your little faces. And we are ready to craft. <laughs> well, at least I hope you are. I am Woo, just getting prepped for this live stream. I feel, I'm already exhausted. <laughs> My fingers are tired just from getting ready. 
I have I've been woefully behind so um, I have a lot of I have a lot of crafting to do today um, and I am gonna power through to the end of uh, my behindness so I have been I was asked to do a live stream catch-up session for those who were behind I think we're all in different stages of behindness for those of you who uh, are participating in the pocket art challenge this is your chance to get caught up along with fellow left behinders <laughs> those of us who are behind um, because we do not leave a pocket art participant behind we shall we shall overcome um, however if you are not participating and you just love the Reset community, the First Love community, this is your chance to fellowship as well. In fact, in the First Love community, we are having what we are calling a, a finish challenge, a finish list challenge, if you will. Some of us have some little persnickety projects. Um, I challenged everyone, make yourself a list. There, are six, there were six weeks left uh, until the end of the season, until summer is upon us. It, uh, approximately so July 1st so you have you had until July 1st to get done whatever it is you d deemed worth doing so I made myself a list today will mark one of those things check completed so that is this event that is getting myself caught up that was scheduling the event hosting the event and having all of this done so that is one of my finish list things and that is actually one of my pocket art challenge pages for list is my finish list so see what i did there it's like a, a list inception it's like a prompt in session uh, inception so that is uh that's what we're doing so if those of you who want to knock out one of your pro finish list projects this is also a good time and if you are not doing that a third option is uh you know just hanging out with us or doing something of your own accord uh, i do notice that because i am hosting this at a much earlier time than i normally do that I am treated to some of our international friends, which I don't normally get to see. So I am very delighted, very delighted to see some of our international friends like Miss Georgie. Hello, across the pond. Hello, and I'm delighted to see your little face. Hello, Miss Julie Ann, not across the pond, from, from Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> but delighted the same. Hello, Sabina from Germany. Good to see you. Hello, Cheryl Casca. It's been it's been a minute since we've seen you. Happy to see you. Annalise from from Belgium. Annalise, we have another Belgium sister, Kelly, who is also in Belgium. I didn't know we had two um, two members who are from Belgium. How exciting is that? So I'm so happy to see your little face. Hello, Miss Sherry Susan. Hello, Miss Annie. Hi, Marie Louise. Hello, Miss Justine. Hello, Miss Arlen. Hello, Penny. Wendy in Croatia. Hello, we get to see you, which we don't normally get to see you always on a, on a live because our, our, what do you call it? Time zones don't match up. Hello, Miss Hope. Hello, Miss Melanie. Hello, Nita. Hello, Lillian. Good to see you. Hello, Jonna. Hi, Miss Heather. All the PA girls are here. <laughs> Pennsylvania in the house. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> there's many of you. Um, hello, Miss Susan Lloyd. Good to see you. Hello, Miss Laura Schubert. Hang on, I lost track. I got, I got bumped out of my lineup. I mean, now I gotta scroll back. Not sure why that happens. Hello, Miss Barbara Ann. Good to see you, Miss Miss Barbara. Miss Barbara. There's Miss Jamie. Just Jamie. Hello, Miss Jamie. Um, Annie's got her gold scissors. Do we have the gold scissor brigade? The is what do we call it? It wasn't the brigade. It was the gold scissor. I forget the word. There was a there was a name for it. I can't remember. Ah, was it the Gold Scissor Fellowship? What, what what was it? We had a little name for it in our community. Did we make a journal card for it? I believe at one point in one of our camps, we even had a little badge or something that even had the name for it. 
I cannot remember, somebody help me, somebody remind me. Some of you have very good memories for things like that. I'm positive that there is a cute little badge that has the name on it and we may have used it for like Camp Wanacraft where it was a little badge and it had the little scissors something along those lines. Hello, Miss Michelle 1L Johnson. Um, Susan, I'm so sorry that you were feeling sick. I'm glad that you're here with us. Um, Miss Jen Schweitzer, it's good to see you. Hi, Miss Diana, I'm glad that you're here. Hi, Miss Patricia, Miss Kelly Anderson, let the craft social begin. But she's doing yard work. Kelly, you're not living up to your name. A little disappointed. Uh, Michelle Massey, good to see you. Hi, Miss Chris Johnston from Down Under. Hello and good day to you. Hi, Tamara. Mm -hmm. Hello, Miss Jen G. We're happy to see your little face. Uh, hi, Penny Sugars, good to see you. Uh, let's see, hi, Miss Jen Lisa. Happy to see your little face. Lynn Myers, I'm so happy that you're excited. What? Uh oh, what? Um, what did you just say? Never mind. Vanessa, Vanessa, I see your little face. Hello, hello and welcome. I'm so happy to see you. What a delight. And there's Crystal Marie. There's your little face. Hello, Miss Sharon Sullivan. Hello, Miss Vanessa Ortega. Hello, it's been too long. Both Vanessa's in the house. Let me see. Vanessa, are you still making your little tassels? I I am curious if you're still if you're still tassel making. I still have one of your tassels attached to my can I just where'd it go? I literally just had your tassel attached to one of my books. I was literally just I just had it attached. You, your, one of your lovely pink little tassels I purchased from you is attached to one of my, um, is it, a, I think it's a playbook or one of my, uh, uh, what do you call those? Like a junk journal. I have one of your little creations attached to my, my, my creation. <laughs> but I'm so happy to see your little face. Hello, Miss Ella. Good morning. Good morning. Um, hi, Cyan. Cy I hope I'm saying it right. Cyan from Wales. Good morning. Good day. Well, what do we say in Wales? Um, is there something we say? What do we say? I always say pip pip cheerio, but I know that's not what, <laughs> what we say in the UK anymore. I stole that from I Love Lucy, <laughs> which is terribly outdated, but I'm so happy to see your little face. It's been a long while since I've seen you. This is what happens when I host a live or upload on the Reset Girl channel is I actually get to see you guys. So sorry, I'm terrible, just terrible. Hi, Miss Jennifer Dubs. Happy to see your face. Um, Ella's in Maryland. Scrolling down, scrolling down. Okay, let me see. Let me keep scrolling down here. Okay. Borida. Did I pronounce it correctly? Borida. Oh, goodness. I hope I just said it right. Um, uh, okay. Hopefully I said that correctly. Okay. I'm not sure. Okay. So it sounds like, so you guys are ready. Are you guys ready to crafty craft? Um, I do have, um, I do have, I did, like I said, I did a lot of prep for today's awesome. Vanessa is still making tassels. Um, okay. Wow. Your little fingers. You're not tired of doing that? It must be very soothing to do that. I, I would imagine it's a very soothing exercise. Do you guys, uh, Vanessa, can you, I haven't been on Instagram in probably three, three and a half years. You are pink fluff, pink fluff, something pink fluff. Hot pink fluff. H-A-U-T-E pink fluff, H -A -U -T -E, pink fluff right? My husband actually remembered that. <laughs> he remembered the hot part. Do you guys are you guys know hot pink fluff? Vanessa had has a 
eye candy Instagram account. If you love looking at beautiful, beautifully organized planners, Vanessa's your girl, okay? Miss Vanessa in the chat room. She will dazzle you with her beautiful. One thing I remember very clearly about your account, Vanessa, is that you have um, gorgeous uh, organized planners in your clear acrylic, <laughs> your clear acrylic little um, organizers, your stands, and you have the white Ikea bookcases, which I had those too, but and you have just everything just beautifully sorted. When I, I when I imagine going into your your craft space, your office, it's like ah, <laughs> it's like a be still a planner girl's heart. All right, hi Bonnie. Okay, Borida, I learned something new. Hi Miss, hello Miss Angie. I missed your little face too. I'm happy to see you guys. Okay, let's yes, Jonna, my tech crew has is in the house officially. Okay, so you guys, we're ready to do some crafting. Let me catch you up on where, where I'm at, because um, I'm probably the, I might be the most behind, I don't know. Um, so here's my little, here's my little album, my little pocket art challenge album. Um, and I do keep, if you recall, I keep a little notebook, which has really been helpful, because I like to sketch out my little pages, pockets ahead of time, which is really helpful for events like this, like doing a big catch up, because I had to plan out what I was going to do. So my live stream is not eight hours long as I'm sitting here going, well, what do I do for this one? And what do I do for that one? So I actually worked ahead and I figured out every single pocket I was going to do um, ahead of time. So here's my little printout. This is, this is what I gave you guys at the beginning of our challenge so that you could tell what every single week would be in advance for the entire year and you would know where we are. So what I normally do to tell what week we're in is I go to Google's or whatever your search engine of choice is and I ask it, what current week are we in? And it will tell me. So my understanding of approximately where we are uh, or when I did it, I should say, put me at week 22. So currently, I, it's possible that we might be in week 23. It's kind of tricky because it depends on when you do it. Did you do it on Saturday? Did you do it on, after Sunday? I think it's week 22. I could be wrong. So I know that going into this on doing it on a Saturday, I knew that I could possibly not have done it. I could possibly not have done it far enough. So it might be 23 by the tomorrow. I'm already behind. <laughs> so all I know is I have planned up until week 22. I personally uh, ended my last uh, video was week 14. So I have week 15 through 22 to do. That is eight, uh, eight weeks worth of pocketing to do. So that, that's what I know that I have to do. So I planned, I sketched out, I figured out how I wanted to do that. I normally keep a little record here um, of what I'm doing in advance. So um, I am about right here. So week 15 is color. Now I had already printed and planned that one out. I just didn't get a chance to film it because somebody some people, I'm not naming names, I'm not accusing anybody, may have left me high and dry, needed to leave. So then, so then I was kind of not, I was unable to produce any of this content for a while. So in any event, we're getting caught up as if none of that happened. And, uh, and so it'll be great. And so we're all going to be doing this together for the most part, or whatever you like, whatever you want to do. So, uh, Usfa, look, Finland is in the house. How fun. See you. I'm telling you, I just learned a big lesson. Saturday morning brings the international friends to the live stream. Note to self. <laughs> If I if if I show up on a Saturday morning, I'm going to find my international friends. That's super fun. So good morning. Welcome from Santa land. <laughs> I love that. So Bonnie says, what's wrong with an eight hour live? That's a good point. That's a good point. That's a good point. 
Um, okay, so um, anyway, so this is what I got going. And uh, so I planned out my, my stuff ahead. I got my tray of goodies over here. I got all my stuff printed out so I know what I'm doing. And then I will just explain uh, my process, my stuff. I'm going to have to cut some of my pictures out because I wasn't able to cut everything out on, you know, beforehand. So some of the boring stuff, I can't speed it up like I do with a pre, you know, a pre-made video. I get to, you, I get to speed through some of the boring parts. So there's just a couple things I have to cut on camera. Uh, but I am going to do a mini lesson. I'm going to, I have a couple things I hope to bring to the table to inspire your own crafting efforts to help you uh, be inspired with craft, uh, pocket crafting in general to think about your own um, maybe think outside the box uh, pull from other inspiring sources uh, pull from other like um, materials that you might be have laying around the house and just think about incorporating into your pockets or your invisible pockets. If you're not using plastic pocket pages, you can fake the look of those, which I discussed, I believe in my first video, my preemptive video before we got started, I discussed that. If you wanna go back to the beginning where I kind of prepped you for all the things. So, um, and I also discussed like my own setup and how I was gonna do all that in case you had not started with me from in the beginning so I'm gonna show you some fun little things I kind of tried to go a little bit outside of my you know the box a little bit here and there and then when I get done I'm gonna do a flip through starting from the beginning so my week one to week 22 I will do one big flip through so we can we can behold so I can behold all of the work that I have put into my stuff, my, my pockets. Um, Miss Crystal Marie, uh, we actually, the sticker truck, so here's just a real quick, the, the sticker truck is about to release. Um, well, we're, we have the sticker truck, which does offer stickers. Um, and we are, um, we have a new product called Corey's Curated Kits. It has these fun stickers that we that I have curated from from afar, uh, but they sold out before I got them to the the wide public. I got them sold out within the club membership, so I couldn't quite get them out there. Uh, but um, we we shall be releasing previous TRG merchandise um, that some some things that I have stuff. So I will be. I will be putting some details about that into our our up an upcoming newsletter. So if you are on theresetgirl.com, get on our newsletter to make sure that you are in the loop and we we will send you an update when that sticker truck is coming to town because we are periodically opening our little sticker truck rather than having an open everyday shop like we used to. Okay, let's let's get going. Let's 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 locomote, shall we? Okay, so where did we leave off? So where I left off was one of my favorite spreads. I loved this. This was the last video that I uploaded, which was very nostalgic and super fun. This was a moment from my week, which was I talked about Pinterest and how it is oh so much fun and how I have a board that's all about capturing nostalgic toys and things from my childhood and which was really fun because a lot of you mentioned that you have either the, a similar board yourself where you've collected toys from pictures of toys from your childhood and it's so much fun it just is I can't believe how many things I have either been reminded of that I forgot about from cereal to hairspray um, all throughout my childhood, whether it's from little girl all the way through teenage years, television shows, movies, you know, uh, I don't know, astringent I used on my face. I mean, it's just fun. It's so nostalgic. Uh, so I just captured some of my fun, like early childhood stuff, put it here in a little grid, added my little journaling, and now we have the dreaded back of the page. So these grids are no joke. These are not for the faint of heart. These are not 
these are not for babies, okay? You are setting yourself up for some serious work. <laughs> That's a lot of cutting. But luckily, I had already done that. I have set this up for success. This was going to be my week 15 uh, video that never got made. So we're making it right now in live live action. So week 15's prompt is color. And what I had chose to do was make um, a uh, spread that was dedicated to a color combination that is a favorite of mine. Um, I have really, 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 really come to love this gorgeous blush pink and like beautiful kind of, uh, kind of Kelly green combination. Just gorgeous. So I didn't make it in every single image. I kind of let the green sort of be a pop more so in the entire spread. So I just let the spread be mostly pink and then let the green pop throughout. So not every single image features it. Some of it though is very, very subtle. Like there is a little tiny bit of green in this one, but for the most part, you can really see where the green is really pop. <laughs> so I, what I might do is adjust where it lays out. I think this green and this green needs to be separated. So once I get them all cut out, I will adjust them once I put them in here. So this is a boring one where I have to cut on camera. So apologies, I should have pre-cut ahead of time, but I, I didn't think that through. Hello, Sunny Sweden, Miss Caroline in the house. Caroline, we have so many international friends today. We have Finland, we have um, uh, the UK, we have Belgium, we have, I'm trying to remember everybody. I'm trying to also remember, do I have, where's my glasses? Okay, I need to get, I need to get some. We have Croatia, uh, we have Australia. We have whales. How fun is that? If I missed you, if I missed your country, please forgive me and then please tell me. Because I think I got everybody, but I could be wrong. It just took me a little bit to get everybody. Hi, Anita. Music. Oh, yes, uh, music. Where's my music? What account? Okay. Okay, you guys, I even put together a little playlist for today. It's instrumental, so it won't bother. It won't bother us to talk over it because that annoys me to hear somebody talking over words. <laughs> you know, it's very distracting. Okay, so let me... A little loud mark says let me turn that down I'm, I'm the DJ today so it's a little hard to keep it all straight Barbara Ann that is correct each um, each of my curated kits have a different theme so the last kit that I put together was a taste of Tokyo so the whole kit was themed around Tokyo and I'm about to release kit number two which has its own fun little theme uh, and they come with a playlist and a little something to sip. So I think the next one is, uh, is really fun. They're all really fun. Come on. I wouldn't put out something not fun. I don't, I don't, how would I even do that? I don't even know. Hey, Miss Betsy. Huh? By mailing there you go. Anita Marshall, are you using a different uh, YouTube account than you used to? One that had three names in it? Am I remembering that correctly? Because I feel like I'm not trying to call you out or anything. I just feel like maybe you're you had another account that had three names. I'm the one's missing. Um, and I love. <laughs> I love what Lynn Meyer said, the United Nations of crafting. It is today. It is. It's so fun. I love that. I always, I'm always reminded of like how wonderful it is when all of these countries are represented and in this 
joint love of creating. How wonderful. I, I just love that. So thank you. Thank you, Reset Community, for showing out today. That's so fun. And thank you, um, Miss Crystal Marie, for inquiring, for caring about it. Um, we do we do have stuff, um, previous things. If you if you reach out to me uh, more specifically about something, and it specifically, I can tell you if that's something we have available, because there are some things we do have available. And let me make sure that I caught everybody coming in. So there's Betsy. I said hello. Hi, Miss Tracy Cannon. Hello, hello. Um, there you go, Anita. I called it. I knew it. Anita Yoder Marshall. I remember that was one little brain cell that was kicking in right there. Hi, Miss Ellen Stevenson. Hi, Shelly. Happy Saturday to you, too. Hi, Jamie. Hello to you, too. Okay, so they got the little bird cut out. Okay, so I have uh, printed, here's a little uh, tip. I have been printing all of my pictures that I use in my pocket pages to the fabulous $5 photo paper. And for the last few years, that $5 photo paper jumped back up to, or not back up, it jumped up to $9 a pack for 50 sheets. And I wasn't that mad about it because for so long it was offered for $5 for 50 sheets in, of this gorgeous premium photo paper, which is nice and smooth and slightly thick. And it's just fantastic for printing our digital printables too. So uh, that's what we have usually recommended anything that we, anything you'd want to print, a, like your digital die cuts to anything like that we always say, hey, go with the $5 photo paper because you will have stunning, stunning die cuts, digital prints, and your photos, of course. So that's what I use. Recently, it went back down to $5 again. So it is this gorgeous Canon Pixma, I believe is the brand, uh, Canon Pixma paper. So it is back to its $5 uh, price, and that is what I am using. It is, I we have bought, just oodles upon oodles of packs of it. It is the, usually the only thing I print to. It is very rare that I ever print to just plain old cardstock. Um, the qual, it's just, it's not, it's not even close to being in the same. Cardstock is just, it's blur, it just gives you a blurry image when you print to it. It just isn't designed for that. If you have a photo printer, and I think most color printers are really photo printers, really, at this point. Um, if you have a color laser printer, uh, you're really not going to get the same kind of quality as a color printer uh, that's designed for photos. It's, it's really not its job to do photos. It's going to give you blurry. Then I feel like cardstock is kind of the way to go with that. And that's what I've also done because I also have a have had a color laser printer in the RV. I've printed tons of photos to that too. I just lower my expectations. Um, and there's nothing wrong using one of those. Yes, Tracy, that's a good point. With photo paper, the only caveat is you can't print double-sided, although um, you really wouldn't want to when it comes to this, uh, but there is definitely a, it's definitely uh, meant to print onto one side. There is a duller, slightly creamier um, side versus the bright white side. And uh, you want to make sure you choose the right setting when you print. Um, it makes a difference, the quality of the print you get. So just some, just some thoughts on that. Okay, so I have 
reached the end of my cutting journey for that one. So I'm just going to, when it comes to this one, I don't think I'm going to doc, you know, do any really embellishing on this. I know I tend to do embellishing, but um, just to kind of doctor up things, but I don't think I'm going to. I have way too much crafting to do today. And um, I'm just going to let the pictures speak for themselves. So what I will do, though, is I'm going to flip these around a little bit and kind of see if I can improve the layout and balance that green a little bit better because some of these pictures do have that green and some do not. So I'm going to see if I can kind of bring a little bit more balance to these photos so that if there isn't green, at least there might be like a little, like this really bright red, deep red pop. So at least there's something in each row that's interesting. Oop, I don't have enough. There's actually more rows than I thought. Okay, so every row should have green is what I now surmise, which is nice. And I wanna break this up better. Oh, so I actually had more green than I realized. It's kind of fun. It's like playing a little game where you flip these around a little bit. Nope, that needs to be there. Also bring the green right into the middle. Let your eye, does your eye, does your eye bounce around in a haphazard way? Does it rest somewhere? The bird really draws you right into the center. This grid doesn't really lend itself to having a single point. It's kind of got this, you know, imbalance already kind of built into it but your eye definitely runs to the bird. Does it change if it's there? Okay, so I think that's just how I'm gonna, let me see. What if I started off with green, does that help? I think this dresser needs something softer there. You also have to pay attention to things with lines. You know, this dresser's got these horizontal lines in it. And so something that will help draw your eye to this bird is giving it something soft and flat or above it. So now your eye, see how this little paint tube and the bird are more, I don't know how to say, I don't know how to say all the things I'm trying to say. This makes your eye draw closer into the center of the page now. It's not in competition with all of these lines above his head. Just like this camera does the same thing. It draws your eye now into the center because this black and the, the bird's head are now bringing your eye. So that camera actually might be a better focal point than the paint. So there's a even the, <laughs> there's a lot going on when you do a composition. So it gives you it draws you right here to the center. So even though you can't really have a center photo because you've got this uh, uh, the uh, one four rows of three. So there's not um, a proper center piece. It, I'm not sure how to say that. Um, it would, it would be that if we only had three rows of three, this obviously is the center. Because we don't have that because of how they cut it, you're creating a, a you're just creating one visually. Goodness, goodness gracious. <laughs> That's a lot. All right, so one way, of, one way you could kind of fa fancy this up is, you know, doing a very simplistic, um, adding like little dots, the little gold stars that I love so much. You could just add a little, you could, z z you know, z zoosh it up with a little bit of the gold glitter. I'm not gonna do that though, because I already, like I said, I already have plenty of stuff to do and I'm just gonna let the pink and green, we'll just let them be the star of the show. If it really bothers me that I didn't, 
zoosh it up, I will come back and do so later, but I doubt that that will bother me that much. Not when I have eight weeks worth <laughs> of decorating to do. So let me see if I can. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna pull this out. Let's see if I can make this easier just to get these in. There we go. This is going in much better. Hi, Miss Sarah. Welcome aboard. Okay, this little, this guy right here needs to be trimmed. He is, this one's not fitting in there. So I'm gonna razor thin trim it and try it again. Okay, so there we go. So I'm gonna pin this back to where it was on the other side. This one goes here. Now what I did in advance was I, I decided to keep all of my prompts um, very consistent today. So I printed them all out in advance. I just uh, just put week 15. I went back and looked, how did I label all of my things? And I was actually quite inconsistent in how I did it, unfortunately. Um, I was not doing it the same way all the time. So I am just gonna have to live with that. So I'm just putting a uh, week 15 on here. The word color is not part of it. I did not print out the word color or anything like that. So it's just week 15 and I'm also just gonna slip it under this little clip cause it's already here. And so it's just a little, it's a little thing. <laughs> it's just a little doodad hanging out. All right, we're moving on to the next page. So we got 15 done. Let me pull my book out here just to keep um, two to two. So let's see here. Speaking of, thank you, Annie, for reminding me. Um, the clubhouse, the first love club house is about to reopen its doors. Uh, it'll be doing that at the end of the month. It'll be opening for the summer session. And if you have enjoyed, um, our camps, uh, we're gonna be having a very special summer session with a very unique, very unique, never before done take on glamping. So we're gonna have a very interesting kind of glamping style um, version that we've never done. So this is gonna be very different, um, but I think really super, super fun. Um, I'm, I'm really, really, I don't know. I'm really, really excited for it. It's going to be very unique. I think you guys are really going to love it. Uh, so that's going to be happening at the end of the month. The doors are going to open. Quick little PSA. Week 16. Let's get week 16 out. Oh, by the way, this is what I made. I made this cute little honey on the steps of Hotel Budapest, I the Grand Budapest, I added her in there because the Grand Budapest is this gorgeous pink, um, it's a gorgeous pink hotel and she had the, the beautiful green dress. So I made her sort of my, um, that's what I did. She's sort of my, my little placeholder for the prompt. The Grand Budapest is from a Wes Anderson film that I haven't seen and I don't remember Mar Marrakesh something, Marrakesh, I don't know. Uh, but it's a highly photographed building. So I, ins I kind of edited it by inserting her. So I just, that's what I decided to do. Every now and then I added these little mini pages to kind of be the prompt holder. And that's what I had done. And I just almost forgot that I did it. All right, so there it is. There's my week 15 officially. Moving on, that's the back side, which has no purpose really. And then week 16, which is collection. Okay, 
so this is going to be a very very simplistic Ooh, need to put this somewhere not spill it okay so week 16 when I thought about week 16 I decided to do a single photo and I thought of one photo came to mind that I thought was really cute and made the really perfect example of a collection that I have done and is also a little nod to the theme of our little glamping for next this coming session and it's my little mini me's the little silver version little silver headed versions these are the little peg dolls that I painted to represent myself when I decided to go silver <laughs> There they all are in all of their glory. I decided to make different little outfits for them, you know, for all of my different lifestyle needs. <laughs> you know, all of those amazing adventures that I have. So um, I am going to trim this down. So I'm using one of my little photo crops. These are the most wonderful little tools. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Especially for... What I, how I'm using it right now. So the, the photo crop gives you the ability to decide how you want to crop the photo because you can see right through it. You can give yourself, um, I'm gonna make it actually be a little bit less room at the bottom and more room at the top. So I'm gonna trim it this way. Readers, please. Um, Miss Tracy asks, will the glamping have a handbook? Uh, we are going to, there's, I can't, I don't want to give away too much details, but there, there is a, there will be a project. There will be projects. There will be things. There will be things happening. Okay. So I have trimmed, I've trimmed my picture and what I think I will do with this is I think I'm going to add some little stars. I'm going to, again, keep this one simple for the sake of time, because some of my other other pockets are going to be more time intensive than this one. So there's my little doodads I love so much. And the appropriate tool for them, as we have learned, is not it's not these. That was, that was a pretty funny video if you watched me trying to grasp these. It is the little jewel, the Marvy Jewel Picker. This is the best tool to use for picking up tiny little lightweight um, scraps, pieces that you want to get some glue on. I think this is what they, uh, for like bedazzling things, that's what it was meant for. This glue is on the dryer side so it doesn't want to let loose so I'm going to make a little starry night above their heads but I'm going to get better glue that's not dried out hopefully I will have some <laughs> awesome I love it Jonna that's so cute you and me were buddies I love that so yes, we're going to have a little mini me uh, 2.0 adventure, but you guys are hopefully going to make some little silver headed future versions of yourself because we're going to think future, our future glorious silver vixen selves. Our camps have always kind of had a backwards, you know, backwards mindset thinking of our childhoods and I think it'll be fun to be forward thinking and I think that will really be fun because I think it's obvious that we're very um, we have we're very creative fun we have really good imaginations if we can pretend that we're at <laughs> imaginary camp the way we do I think it's gonna be a lot of fun so I'm gonna make I'm gonna pretend that they're under a little starry sky and give them, they're actually on a step, 
they were taken at a park, a waterfront park in Tacoma, Washington. Beautiful park in uh, at sunset. It was gorgeous lighting. Oh, I miss, 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 miss all of that beautiful waterfront area. Okay, so they're giving them a little bit of, I wonder if you can get that on camera, like the little pizzazz of it. Okay, thank you, Sabina. I see your little comment. Ellen says, en route to the silver vixen phase, much to my hairstylist's dis dismay. Ellen, I applaud your decision. You know what? Um, I think that, uh, I think it's a great time because a lot of women, myself included, opted to do that starting in 2020. <laughs> out of necessity first and then it just it's picked up speed and there's just so many women that have done it and it is I think it's a little like at first it's just a little it's a little you know it's difficult making a transition but then you just get used to it and then it's just a hair color you know and it's it's the rest of it's just all in your head and after a while, you don't, I don't know, I don't really think about it anymore because it didn't change anything inside of me. I still feel the same as I did before. I still feel inside of myself. I still feel my youthful self. So I, I'm just, there's not much about me that I'm one of those people that thinks like, I'll do, I do what I want. I'm not like that. I've always been way over concerned about what people think. I still struggle with that. So it's one area that I have, I have taken control of. And I think that is a very good thing to have one thing. If you're a person that struggles with that, if you're a person who struggles with the, I care too much what other people think, it is a good thing to have one little area that you have, you have, taken ownership of and that's one of them so so this I don't know if this is gonna work cuz I'm the white gel pens are not always they don't always cooperate on photo paper and they always you always have to have like a really good white pen sometimes sometimes they're like Aren't they, aren't they persnickety? Don't you guys find that white gel pens are just persnickety little creatures? Ooh, that one's noisy. What is, what is making that noise? Okay, I don't know if it's the photo paper it doesn't like or if it is, this is gonna be a problem because I had, I had a plan for my white gel pens and now I can't get it to write. I only have two. This one kind of wants to write, but not really. You know, it, you have one job. I don't ask much of you. Okay, does anyone have tricks about how to get a white gel pen to do its job? Okay, I'm gonna let that one sit upside down for a minute. I'm not sure why it's being like that. This one, I'm not, also, also to be fair, I'm also not sure how old these are either, or at least I'm not sure how old this one is. This one could be older. That one, I think I may, when I went to Japan, which still that was, you know, a decent amount of time ago. So that still makes the pen old. Um, that's probably when I bought both of them. I don't know. Who knows? We, we can't babysit our pens. Okay, I only have two and already these are not behaving. So that's unfortunate. I will have to come back to this one. I was going to draw little outlines and fun doodads on them. So I'm going to put week 16 prompt on it. That is what this is. Now I have left myself no room to do that. 
I'm gonna do it with my little stapler. Okay, wig 16. I'm also gonna draw a fun little thing there. And how can I add the word collection without it being like, be kind of cool? Oh, one moment. I actually have the word collection. Let me see. Maybe, oh, are there take backsies when you do the stuff like this? Okay, there, there might not be, but I'm going to double staple this. We like double staples. Okay, so for now, because I have no choice, my white pen is a little brat. I'm going to just slip it in here and I will come back to it later again if I feel so inclined. So there's my week 16. It is a collection. It is a collection of my little mini me's. Tracy says white gel pens are great when they do work, right? They're fantastic when they work. <laughs> That's why all of us probably own one. But getting it to work is another problem. I, I wish I had a white out pen. I don't think I have one of those either. I just, ha I, you know, I switched to the white out tape. Even the corrector pens are not trustworthy. Um... Cyan, that's a good point. She said that uh, she gets compliments about her hair color, assuming it's silver, and her hair is in the best condition because she's not coloring it anymore. Another good point to uh, the silver heads in the group is that y your hair does end up becoming better condition because you aren't coloring it. Agreed. I a thousand percent agree with you. And uh, I lost a ton of my hair after the uh, the big, the big, uh, I can't say it that way. Jeez. Uh, you know, the C19 thing. Uh, and then I had to build back better. <laughs> so I had to put a lot of stuff into my scalp to make it grow back thicker. And now I have even thicker hair than when I started because I put so much stuff into it. So now I have a much better head of hair, but my goodness. That was a lot of effort and work and cutting all my hair off because it looked so crazy with when it all thinned out the way it did. That was very scary watching it come out in clumps. Okay, so that was week 16. Now let's get to week 17. So because of the pocket that I chose, and I, I am kind of limited in my pocket options because I really refuse to buy any more pocket pages and I'm trying to use them up. So I have this kind of uh, pocket that's got the, the double three by fours at the top, but I'm not letting that hold me back because what I want to do is make another three by four I'm sorry, six by four image, and I'm just gonna cut it up the center and then slip it in the pockets because I love the way that looks when you take a single image and then break it up. I think it's so cool looking. Um, I have done that and I've done it, like I did it in a big way here. Like I took a big image and cut it up into pieces. I just think that that has a really strong, strong look to it. Did I, have I done it any other place? I have not, I don't think so. Not, not in this album, I've done it in other. So that's what we wanna do here. Now, I wanna talk to you guys though, before I do it, I wanna talk to you about what I'm gonna do here. This prompt is week 17. And week 17 is uh, a verse, quote, or lyric. So with a prompt like that, you've got three different options to go with. Um, I tend to go with uh, verses, which I did. So the verse I went with is Proverbs 8:17, which says, I love those who love me and those who seek me will find me. So the 
the theme that I decided to hone in on the, the like really hit the kind of visual for that was a seek. So then I started thinking about seeking. What does it look like to, you know, what does it visually look like to seek something? And what would it look like visually? <laughs> how does you, how do you visually show seeking? So that's kind of what inspired my thoughts, my imagination. How would I show that the seeking process that can look like so many things? So I kind of took that as this idea of a journey because that's very close to my heart, thinking about Bible time. And we've always kind of showed it as being this kind of road trip experience, <laughs> like, dry, you know, going on this trip and you're journey, journal, journeying through the Bible. So that's, that was my thought. So once I got to that point of how I want, sorry, that once I got to that point of how I wanted to do it, that was step one. So then I started thinking that through, like, how would I show that? So I started thinking about um, the journey and how it's a very long road. So that made me start thinking of the road and where does that road lead and what would that look like? And it's kind of off into this, this mountainous, is it mountains that you're going off into and mountains kind of speak to, uh, there's lots of mountains in the Bible and often great things happen there. Difficult things happen there. Many, many events happen at Bible at the, at mountains. So mountains and a road <laughs> started to come together in my mind. So I started looking around for images of mountains and roads, kind of like bringing those two things together. And then when I started thinking about bringing those things together, um, so uh, where are we, my, okay, I wasn't sure what was going, not sure what we were, what's going on. Why is my, why are things? It's, it's my computer. Okay. All right, it's a little distracting, so I'm not sure, am I on camera still? <laughs> okay, um, so I just wanted to show you guys, um, so my thought process, which I'm trying to explain, is I started thinking about how to bring those two concepts together, and sometimes you won't necessarily find a single thing in one photo. Sometimes you, you might find yourself um, wanting, like creatively wanting to bring things together, wanting to bring things together in multiple photos. And I don't know if you've ever seen, this is what, what I started thinking of because I've seen so many of them. If you have ever seen the kind of surreal art of um, collage artists and how they will bring uh, different backgrounds and pictures together. So they'll take like, for instance, some collage artists, digital collage artists will take images from like advertising from the fifties and they will impose it over art, art or photography art of like landscapes. And they'll kind of bring those two things together and create an entirely different uh, image and it's surreal like it is like whoa it's very otherworldly so that's what I started thinking about is how those kind of like images that come together give you these very different worlds and kind of create a little bit of a uh, surreal they're a little bit abstract they're just very different and I didn't want to get like crazy with that <laughs> didn't want to go crazy with it but uh, I did want to I did think about it so I just wanted to give you like a very tame example not not anything nuts because some of it is a little uh, a little a little kooky I will say that but here's an example uh, let me show you my my screen. So here's an example. This is something that's on Etsy. So you can see here in the foreground, this is a, a different image. It's like showing you what kind of looks like maybe like a like a, a highway in, in farmland is the foreground. And then in the background is this kind of image where they've brought in a lot of different like um, scapes that have come from the desert and they've probably like imposed them more, stacked them up. And then they've put this kind of like the very background is like a bunch of planet, planetary. So they've built an entirely different um, picture altogether. So like this is not even reality, <laughs> but it is really cool. It's very, 
it has the colors in it are very interesting it's you know very beautiful beautiful colors is very interesting it's kind of a surreal is exactly the word it's like it's a very otherworldly kind of um image so that is kind of the the i'm trying to find my chat room again there we go so that was kind of my inspiration so there has been uh, a couple times in the past where I have done something similar uh, not not anything nuts but like taking images you know from magazines and then kind of imposing them over a completely different background uh, like this is a Yahtzee sheet um, and a map and then kind of laying them over the top so it looks like they're in a, a completely different setting um, this is from the summer smash book of 2020. Um, this is from 2018. This is a uh, catalog image where I cut it out and I laid it over a um, scrapbook paper from Crate, crate Paper uh, that was like a background from the desert. So then she looks like she's about to step into this other world. So you see what I'm saying? It's like you're just layering two different images. So those are examples of ways that I tried to take that concept and kind of marry them in my my own scrap scrappy way so um so I was looking around at different concepts um and just wanting to bring those two things together so I found this picture that I really liked um of the mountains and this road I really liked the road I really loved how you know, it goes off in such a way you can't even see, you can't even see that it goes off into the mountains. It actually looks like it just ends right here in the middle, the middle of the meadow. Um, and then I saw this other picture where you have this really beautiful, beautiful sky with the um, the stars and everything above it. And the more I looked at the photo and I literally moved it on top, um, you can you can see that these they're so similar. You could take this picture you could cut the mountains away and lay it on top of this photo and you would change the sky entirely so i thought oh let me try that let me see because i could use my white pen if it wasn't being bratty and write part of the scripture up here and then write the rest of the scripture down here with a black pen so that was kind of my very simplistic take on kind of adding those you know, marrying those two images but doing it not digitally uh, which would involve Photoshop. It would involve skills. <laughs> it would involve skills I don't have, but you can do something similar analog if you, you know, find, find images that can work together. So <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to get my fussy cut because I want to get some of the, the ridge of this, these mountains. I want to keep that uh, detail there. And, uh, Hello, Rock Mama. Melanie, I, I, I did say hi to you. Okay, I see what your, I see your little face and I was like, did I say hello to you? But I believe I did. Okay, so let me see. Okay. All right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna dive in. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start cutting the jaggedness of the mountains away and hopefully it will look cool because the mountains actually have little white tips if you obviously if you if you photograph these mountains at night you wouldn't see any of the white snow but because they were photographed in the day you will and now we're going to put the sky we're going to turn the sky into this black beautiful starry night so you're going to take a a gorgeous landscape that was taken during the daylight and impose it on a nighttime sky so I have no idea what it will look like but I decided to see like look how cool already isn't that neat how how transformative it is so you can see that this kind of doing stuff like this has such a cool opportunity you know to put it on something entirely different in the background like imagine if you put this on an ad with a kid a kid would look like he was crawling over the mountain or something um so i am now going to impose it over here so see already i have now i have changed the way that the 
the whole, this is like an entirely different planet. <laughs> like, that's not possible. That's not how the world works. <laughs> we do not have daylight here and then a nighttime sky. Like, that's just not how it is. But we have, we have made it so. So it is kind of cool. It does make it look like a, a bit of a different planet and um, like a heavenly, a heavenly world. So, um, so I just happened to get very fortunate that these two photos I found fairly quickly um, ended up being so similar in their composition that the mountains sort of easily laid on top. The only difference is this little black piece right here, but I can live with that. Live with that, I can. So I'm gonna glue it on top of uh, the other and essentially then I'm gonna need to cut it down the middle because it has to fit into these two pockets. So it's gonna live side by side in here. And then like I said, I'm gonna try, I, which now I'm, I have lost a lot of faith in my white pen. So this is not going to be awesome, but I did practice. Um, I will show you what my plan was. So where's the camera? Okay, so here was my idea, which I am a terrible sketcher. So I was gonna put the top, the at where the sky is, I was gonna put the first part of the scripture. I love those who love me would be in the white pen in the sky. And then on the road stretching out is, and those who seek me will find me. Uh, that was gonna be in the black pen. So and then I was going to add a moon with one of my journaling stickers and then, you know, but I don't know now this, this pen is, <laughs> this pen has disappointed me. Uh, I don't want to ruin my cool picture. So I might need to wait is what I might need to do. I might not be able to finish this gloriousness on camera. Um, let me see. This is also photo paper. I, I honestly don't know if it's the photo paper with the ink that it doesn't like. This is also something that I printed to that, that glorious photo paper. Uh, this is one of our journaling pad covers that I designed. Um, so I'm going to try writing on it and see if that's if it comes back to life, because that could be part of the problem uh, that it's just the photo paper. You know, this is just, I might just do half of it for now and come back later, but I, I don't, using a black pen at the top is just not gonna, it's not gonna pop and it won't work. So I might just do half of it and, and do the, do the rest of it later, buy a new pen <laughs> and just show you later in another video, be like, here, look, I did it. Cause yeah, this doesn't want to work. Look how, and look, it's the ink is all the way up to here. This is like a brand new pen. This is the one I have not used. Um, Mr. MacGyver, yes. would you, would you like to, would you like to do something to this pen? Like throw it out? No. Um, would you try, I don't know, uh, warm water? I mean, at this point it doesn't work. So it's like, it's dead to me. So whatever you do to it, it's, you know, it's, it's not working. So it's not like, okay. you can't make it, I can't make it worse. you can't make it worse. <laughs> Ella says, if you have a lighter, try applying a bit of heat to the tip of the gel pen. Jonna says, if you have rubbing alcohol, try rubbing the rollerball with it. See, these are, these are crafty secrets from veterans who understand the pain of the white gel pen. I, uh, I am very familiar with the pain of the white gel pen. I remember this from my planner girl days, people talking about the white gel pen. So, all right. Um, let's, let's get this. Let me get my little glue mat down. Let's get this image glued. Burr, burr, burr.
Okay, so that is a super cool picture. How fun is that? Isn't that weird too? It's like the second you do that, you just know there's something wrong with this picture. Like that's not reality. <laughs> like you can tell there's something amiss. Okay, so I'm gonna trim it first here. And then I gotta figure out how to trim it further so it will fit in my pockets. Or should I do the, okay, so here's my little, here's the little cutting guide that gives me the three by four um, thing. So let me just test this really quick and make sure just, so what happens with this is it's fully, it fully fits um, width wise, but it's a little short at the top. So now I know that I can afford to let it peek out at the top. I don't need to trim it at the top. It's just the side. So I'm gonna cut it, I'm gonna lop that side off because that's where I have that extra little black. Um, the other thing I need to do is think about the fact that I have to get the um, text up here. So I will probably plan on putting the white text up on this side of it and then the black text down here. So what I'm going to do, because I am not an artist when it comes to lettering, and I've, I kind of tried to practice a little bit, but I'm going to do it in pencil first. Um, my, my plan was, was to try to tweak the lettering so it sort of filled up the space. It kind of like self-adjusted. So I'm going to try... It's kind of hard. I think there's a trick to this like making the letters kind of adjust to the 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 perspective, you know, like if you use Photoshop, they have tools that will take an object and twist it like an angle it so that it will change its perspective. But when you have to do it yourself, it is a little tricky. You you're kind of doing it with your eyeballs like, well, how would how would I how would I do this? So I'm just, I'm just going to, I'm going to do my best to just do my, my way, my way of doing it. My, it doesn't have to be accurate. It's kind of, I just want to fill the space. How about that? And those who seek me. Okay, I think this is pretty cool, even though this is so not accurate as far as uh, perspective goes, it's still really neat. So I'm gonna live with that. That's cool for my first time trying it. I know that sounds braggy. I don't. I didn't mean it to be braggy. Name that show. Okay, so because I still don't trust myself, I'm gonna use my erasable pen to go over that. which has a really fine tip. Oh, it went, it's going a lot faster when you're going over it instead of doing it for the first time. There. So 
So I'm going to also, I noticed like I need to trim the bottom a little bit. So that's the bottom of it. That's really cool. It looks a little bit like it got melted in the sun. <laughs> so I think I'm trying to think about how I planned on. This is week 17. So week 17, I'm going to do this. I just made these very simple, simple little, these simple little guys here. Okay, there was no, I didn't make a little, another little tag like verse or anything like that. I just left it because I figure if I put a proverb or a quote, I'm gonna know what, um, what this was. So I'm gonna put, This is Proverbs 8.17. So half of it's going to go, so it's going to go up in here, but the other half I'll have to do the writing up here. So maybe, or maybe I won't, maybe it'll never... Maybe it'll never have its day in the sun. Maybe just, it'll just be part of verse 17. Okay, so half of it's going in here. And it fits, it fits in there really nice because, ah, but now it's getting cut off right here. Okay, so when I cut this side, that little persnickety piece is gonna get cut off, ha ha. So no one will ever know it wasn't a perfect fit. I'll know that I took two pictures and did that. So there's week 17. Isn't that cool? That's so cool. I do want to look at my, um, I do want to see something though, because I have layering circles and that could be a really cool like moon. Let me have a moon coming up. Okay, so if I did a moon, Corey style, what moon would I pick? One of my like fun office, office-y kind of moons. Like that would be, that would be my take on doing this kind of surrealism. It's like, would it be blue? Would it be pink? Would it be the library card? How about this one that says month of? No, that's not. How about this one with the rays? Is that kind of cool? That's, these are, this is from the Corey's curated layering circles. I feel like it needs a kind of a boldness let's let's cut the trim this little white sliver off here because it's gonna sit on that dark blue and you don't want that I wanted to interact with the mountain a little bit if it just floats at the top I don't know I want it to seem like it's part of, it's been inserted into the picture a little bit. Okay, so, all right. Now I'm, I'm happier with that. Okay, so that's week 17 for the books. So I did week 16, week 17. I showed you guys the surreal, surreal. Now on to week 18, which is experiment. All right, so now we're gonna do a little, this is where I wanted to show you guys a little lesson, a little mini lesson, if you will, a little, 
and this isn't really a lesson. This isn't, I don't really feel this is something groundbreaking that you guys are gonna be like, oh! <laughs> I, for some of you, this is just a good reminder that for some of you, it's just like, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, I gotta, I gotta think, I gotta re be reminded. This isn't, this isn't groundbreaking crafting. Okay. Um, let's, let's, okay. This is a good time to, let me get myself situated with my, go back to, sometimes I need to go back to my past work to see things that I've done in the past to be like, oh yes. Okay, so let us talk about, we're gonna do a little bit of experiment and experimentation. So this has to do a lot with like things I've talked about before. So I'm not, I'm not talking about something um, that I haven't mentioned before. And this is actually one of my favorite topics. Uh, this has a lot to do with like the whole layering 101 and composition. It's kind of a fundamental of crafting. And it's one of the things I feel that is um, one of the things where pockets really, like the pocket principle, the way that we're crafting in pockets, this is where they shine. But this doesn't, this doesn't necessarily mean you can't apply this principle in only pockets. It's just a matter of how you crop things. So this is like a cropping principle. And I wanted to show you some different material that you can crop to like achieve this and just think about how you are cutting things and doing things because this is really giving you the opportunity to be this kind of an editor, if you will. And it is Oh my gosh, it's so fun. This is this is this is really what made me fall in love with pockets and gave me pocket fever was having this kind of like editing eye and control over things. And it makes all the difference. All the difference in having something that's just that's nice. That's that's nice. And that's cool. Like that's different. That's unique. This is your spin on it. That's the difference. And it opens up the possibility to use so many other materials in a unique way. This will just, this, if we all used, if I gave you guys all the same magazine, for instance, and we all sat down and started cutting it all up, then if we all sat down and we all started flipping our pages, it could, it would be amazing to see how different our pages could look based on the way we cut out our pictures. And that's that's what I wanted to share with you. That's the thing that's really, really important. So I have the back of this little pocket page to work with, which is really one of the best ones to have for this, this little example, this experiment, so that you can, or this, the experiment prompt, so that you can see these are very simple and easy and they won't be intimidating. They're not like the nine pocket grid <laughs> that work, that I did. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to share with you is I'm going to be using for this um, particular layout is I'm going to use magazine pages because these are going to, um, most of us have magazines laying around and so it's going to be a very simple material and something ordinary and it's going to show you how you can take something that's so ordinary, things that we see all the time and then make them so interesting and different and it will be a it will be something that uh will just change the way that you craft it can change the way that you like look at your materials the way you look at ordinary things and start incorporating them into your crafting and not feel like in order to craft i have to buy all of the scrapbook.com's collections because that is not the only way to craft that's not the only way to be a paper crafter um and you can be more you know um you can have more of a range of materials to work from that are things you would normally throw away. <laughs> things that you don't normally think about. Libraries love selling magazines for like, a, so a lot of magazines get sold for like a dime, a quarter. And even if you just scooped up some magazines to work with, you could end up having some cool things. So I wanted to share with you, um, first of all, <laughs> 
this is this is kind of really this is actually kind of funny so i have i bought this a few years ago to organize all of these like magazine pages that i've had and i've i sorted them into like different categories because i've i have had a magazine kind of a I'm not going to call it an addiction, but I have looked at them as like they've had a lot of valuable information. Uh, long before Pinterest was around, I always kind of held on to articles and pictures. I've always loved using magazine pictures and my collages, and I would just make my own my own little collage books, you know, for 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 my you know for myself. So uh, that's how I have kept them as I've sorted them. So. <laughs> I was looking at these yesterday, getting ready, and so I just wanted to share with you that I think this is really funny. These magazine pages that I'm going to share with you today are so old. <laughs> these are like a decade old. Some of these come from magazines that don't even exist anymore. This one is from 2010. <laughs> this one right here. <laughs> this one is from 2010 from Shape Magazine. So this one's from, there's one from 2014, 2013, and then there's some that don't, they don't, they're from like Lucky Magazine. Do you guys remember Lucky? Um, I have pictures that come from like um, things like this. I don't even know if this is a real magazine. Oh, it's from Fred Meyer, 2017. This is one of my newer magazines. <laughs> so I, I'll grab the free magazines. This was a free magazine at the like at the front of the, the store because pictures like this or the fact that they have like the little text on it, I'll cut that out and use it for something. But I wanted to show you a lot of times we'll pass by stuff and not think about it, but it'll end up being something that we could use um, in such a clever or interesting or fun way that it be can become artistic and creative. Um, so I wanted to show you how I'm going to do that for my experiment prompt. Um, so here are some girls that we have. These are just advertisements that I kept um, for different reasons. So there was things about these ads that I thought were really interesting and I'm so glad that I kept them and have held on to them <laughs> for, <laughs> for thir in some cases 13 years um, just <laughs> Holding on to them for such a time as this. <laughs> and now they are getting a chance to live, um, which I think is hilarious. So, uh, but I'm going to show you what we're, I'm going to show you a kind of super fun thing you can do with them. So, and it all comes down to having a fun, the, the easiest method of doing this, honestly, is using these little cropping tools. So I have in the past shown people how to um, shown people the benefits of these little cropping tools. These come from simple stories, um, which I have talked about these in almost every single camp that I have hosted. Um, they are they're not as easy to find anymore, and I'm not even sure that simple stories has continued to manufacture them. Um, they come in a they look like this. Uh, these are the circle ones. They're they're called photocrops. And I have bought multiple packs of them over the years because I'm always afraid that they're going to be impossible to find. But just just in case um, you can get from the Dollar Tree, they have a two pack of these very thin, flexible cutting mats that you can find in the kitchen section. Um, that you can cut up and make your own, which I have. So I actually have some of the cutting mat materials in here as well. So I've made my own. Um, I've even made like my own custom sizes because the, the simple stories do not have every size I need. So I've made very unusual little sizes that I, I wanted for myself. So I keep all of my crops in this little crop box um, for my own purpose, but these make the experiment, I'm a, the, the process I'm about to show you, they make it the easiest to do this with because you'll be able to see what I'm talking about, the, the, the easiest way. These match the pockets, the pocket pages, which is what they were designed for. So you lay these over on top of a photo 
is what they do. And as I'm doing this, a lot of you who have done camp with me, you're gonna start saying, oh yeah, I remember her showing us this because I have talked about this so many times. So it, it this will not be groundbreaking. <laughs> so if this is exciting to you and you do not have a set of the crops and you can't find them easily, do not be do not be concerned. You can if you if you have a Dollar Tree and you can purchase them online. Dollar Tree does make these available. You just have to buy I think you have to buy six of them, like six packs. So you'd have a total of 12, which do not be alarmed. These are really handy to have in your kitchen. I use these on my desktop. I do, I, I keep them on my desk to do like my skincare, my my crafting, my makeup, my um, like everything. Like I eat with them because I do a lot of my living right here at the in my RV space. But these are handy for your kids to craft with, to put on the tabletop. They're, they're chopping mats, so they're very, they're very handy and flexible. So I, I have 12 <laughs> of them in my house. So don't feel like you won't use them. You'll use them. They're also great for making covers for your playbooks, your uh, junk journals. You can cut them and punch them with a heavy duty disbound punch or um, you know your, uh, your single hand punch. So that's another fantastic use for these. And primarily how I use them is for notebook covers. So they are fantastic and I call them an essential craft tool. So either way, you're gonna end up using them. So that's all I have to say about that. Let us, let us discuss how we will be cropping these things. So I wanted to talk about, let me show you an example of what I, this is a target. I, I tried to find a picture to kind of show you an example of what I want you to picture as your experiment goal, um, Corey PC. Okay, so here is an example of something that's already complete on Pinterest. Do you notice the cool way in which this has been, these have been cropped? This is a magazine page that was just folded into an envelope, but it, but this is what was left as the main part of the, the face of the envelope. So this is what you're left with. So I wanted to show that to you so that you could see. That's what we want to do is we want to crop our photos in, in an interesting way that we are left with some really cool angles. Um, so I wanted to demo that by showing you how I am going to crop and get some really interesting shots out of this. So here's my little, my smaller crop. And I could put this, most of, most of us would have a tendency of running straight to her face, right? Because that's what we're used to doing. We're used to seeing someone's face and we put that person right in the center of our photo. Because that's just, I think that's just a habit. It's what most of us know to do. Maybe if we were feeling a little bit creative and craft, we, we might put her off a little off center. <laughs> However, that's not what an experiment is today. We want to do some goofy, weird, wild things, something a little different. And in this case, I wanted to get a crop of her cool, this this interesting configuration where she's got her, her knee jutted out and then her leg bent back and then her hand. In this shot, you're seeing part of her cool pattern sweater, this little pop of red, and then these really, these are really cute pants. They really, really are. I love the pattern of them. And I think a tiny little pop of this magenta shirt. So playing around with this will give you different uh, pieces, parts. You might even like skip the shirt and like get this more white space down here. So you're playing around with proportion, what you're actually gonna get in the shot. And I really like this here. Another um, piece that I would get out of this is this upper part here, maybe from her shoulder down here, is it's clearly a woman with her hand in her pocket, which when we think about that, it's like a woman whose hand is in her pocket, very like very elegant, very casual. It it connote it connotes denotes <laughs> a a casual air, a sense of confidence, right? Isn't that how most of us would imagine a woman whose hand is, is in, in her pocket in such a way? That's an it has an air of elegance to it. When you when I would see that as a as a picture in itself, that speaks that with 
I don't need any words. I don't need any fancy copy. I don't need to see her face. Just that little picture says, this is a confident, elegant woman. So I am gonna crop this first because I want that. I think that's kind of a cool shot. I don't need her little face. I just want her probably about right there. I've kind of played around enough and I am getting my readers on. Also, where is my chat room? There we are. Okay, so cutting magazine paper is a little challenging because it's so very, very thin. You need to be very delicate. And it is a little challenging to get it in the pocket, so it might be something you have to back with a little bit of scrapbook paper that you don't care about, which is a really great use for the B side of scrapbook paper. So here is an example of that interesting crop. Sorry, it's a little hard to see it when you've got stuff up to the camera very slowly. Isn't that interesting? I think it's interesting. So let's take another piece and part of her, which is this shoulder and her, I think I want to get, she's got this jacket on that's kind of dripping its little tail. So I don't want to cut that tail off. And then, so 10 years floating around in my organizer, it's finally, finally gets to live finally gets purpose. Okay, so there's another cool shot. You could add a, a, like a poem, a lyric with a white pen, if you found a white pen that actually works. <laughs> you could, you could add a, a cool quote, something with that, right? Isn't that cool? I think it's cool. So there would be some ways of like cropping cutting I don't really need her face that's not as necessary because we're we're trying to do an experiment here same thing with this picture here do we want a cool hand you know that kind of like hand action there um, personally now this one I'm going to backtrack a little on what I said I absolutely love her like lipstick it's poppy I don't really need her face face but Sometimes face images are cool when we just take parts of them, like a little interesting angle of her face. She's got this contrast between her top and her lips that are very interesting. So I'm gonna take a risk that I'm going to, hang on a second. I'm trying to remember how I planned this one because there's also a cool picture on the back in this crazy dress. <laughs> A crazy dress that I don't know any of us would be excited to wear. And I was trying to re remember my plan. Did I plan on... Okay, I think... I'm trying to remember what I wanted to do here. Because... Was it... Was I going to take... Was I going to take the bottom of it? Her lips are very... Okay. I, I don't remember now. I think I wanted to take part of her dress, like this part of her right here. So if I do that, was that part of, okay. Maybe I should take this part and then just deal with whatever I get on this side. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so with this picture, I get to line up the bottom of my crop with this straight line here. So that's kind of cool. And I'll just go in there with my scissors. And so with this one, we have this really interesting texture with this crazy dress that I'm sure none of us would ever <laughs> want to wear. It looks incredibly uncomfortable. Like a kind of similar to like a little sausage style um, covering. So there's part of her self, her little, well, very little body. <laughs> and then we have her 
very luscious little red lips and this beautiful green. It's such a cool contrast. So I'm gonna take part of her face because she just, I don't know, I just think that's cool. So I'm gonna get part of her, but not all of her, which will make, I think the picture will be kind of neat that way. There. See, almost, she almost kind of reminds me of like a, like a painting. Kind of like an AI art, like a ge art generated by an AI. I don't know if you guys have seen that kind of stuff, but it's like, she looks like an oil painting. She doesn't even look real now because we've taken her out of her context. That's, I, I'm glad I did that. I'm glad I went that way. So, and you can keep scraps. Sometimes there's interesting pieces and in scraps if you wanted to make like a collage out of, you know, like with strips or something. Here would be another example of, you know, like if you wanted to take this little piece here, she's got some interesting little shoes. You could just, you know, keep the legs. Um, let me show you an example back in, this is from my Smashbook in 2020. Uh, this this was one of the examples that I did that where I cut just like some feet. Uh, this was my first time of experimenting, cutting up modeling shots and, and seeing that. So here was a larger picture of her and then I cut off her little feet um, and kind of overlaid them. And I thought that was kind of, uh, that was interesting. I love the color of her socks. So, her dress looks so comfy. <laughs> it looked so comfy. Plus she's wearing comfortable looking shoes for a change. Usually models are always <laughs> wearing very uncomfortable looking shoes. So like these. So I'm gonna trim these. I don't know that I'll use these in anything, but it just, I don't know. You never know. So just for the sake of, there's a lot of texture in this picture from, look, She's got the, the pattern that she's standing on, the pattern behind her of the wall, the pattern of the dress that she's wearing, and then the pattern of the shoes. So there's a lot of texture, pattern, light going on here. So this just might be an intro, when you take it out again out of its context, and then you just have this interesting skinny object that has pattern all over it, this could be interesting in and above itself. You know, your eyes like, what am I looking at? So that's what kind of makes this a create a very creative endeavor because you're playing with um, all new shapes, all new colors, all new texture, all new everything. Your eye is just having this super fun experience, just putting something entirely new together. Like it's, it doesn't even, it's, this is not what the, <laughs> this is not what the editor intended or the stylist intended. I mean, her legs are just gorgeous. She, she has, she is in fact standing exactly in the most flattering way you would stand when you're wearing heels, when you're wearing a beautiful, um, what is that type of dress called? I'm forgetting the name of it. This is like a, a starlet dress, right? So what you're left with is, you know, it looks beautiful. It makes a lovely clean line, but you have all of this, beautiful kind of texture going on and so it does kind of it does seem kind of like what is that it's so interesting so different so you end up getting very unique outside of the box pieces to work with and you can blend them in with some of your other kind of scrapbooky pieces not necessarily saying things like die cuts and like the cutesy stuff but some of maybe your um Maybe your dots, maybe your wooden embellishments, maybe, you know, like the little wood pieces. Uh, maybe you have um, the your washi, things that kind of make it more junk journal-y or kind of, um, what's the right word? Junk journal-y, art journal-y. And when you do that, it's almost like you're creating mixed media and you're adding the painting and all this stuff. Like I, I, I I don't want to pull, I, I don't want to do all that. I don't want to do all the layering and the painting. I don't, that, that involves a lot of skill set that I just have been apparently very resistant to learning and taking the time to learn, but I can cheat the system by whipping out cool, interesting pieces to start with. 
And now when I layer other stuff with it, I've started with a base piece that's already kind of like, ooh, that's cool and interesting, it's different. So I'm not starting with um, like, and, and please don't misunderstand, I'm not, I'm not bashing on scrapbook stuff, but I'm, I'm also not saying like, we don't always have to use cute stuff. We can, we can kind of elevate our creativity to a more sophisticated style and be a little bit more modern um, or in, uh, more artistic. It doesn't always have to be the cute, cute. We don't, we don't have to go cute all the time. We can push ourselves a little, a little more. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm fiddling with my cute. I don't really have a lot of cute stuff. <laughs> Okay, here, this this is one of my, my designs, okay? So this is like a little vintage, little advertisement for a fan, okay? So you guys know, I love the cute, I've always loved the the really old school crepe paper and an October afternoon, but that does lend itself a little bit more to the cute stuff. So I try to balance cute. I don't, I'm not a cutesy person. I don't use cutesy stuff. I use little bits of vintage. I love authentic vintage. I love like real vintage stuff. Um, I don't tend to use a lot of this kind of stuff in my design and I probably wouldn't, I probably wouldn't pair stuff like this together, but I would, I would call this cute. It is a cute style. So I tend to be very light handed with this kind of stuff. You guys notice that I don't tend to use a lot of my own designs. I didn't use a lot of TRG designs because I, I think that the audience that I have loves cute designs, which is wonderful, but I just tend to be a little bit more very, I'm very light handed with it. I don't use a lot of it. I'm more, it's more like accents, not the, you know, the bulk of things. And I do, you know, I love looking at other people's stuff. Like when they do the whole collection, it's eye candy. I love all the color together, but I don't design that way. I do think it's fun to do a little bit of mixture of things. And so if, you know, but it, but it's costly. It costs a lot of money to, to buy all that stuff all the time. So all that to say, Blending in cheap magazines, cheap pictures, cheap catalogs, cheap cheap uh, yard sale finds. There's all kinds of textbooks, all that that ephemera that I'm always pushing on you guys every time we do camp, every time I do a workshop. I, I put a list out of a million pieces of different ideas for you. It's it's sometimes it's the way you crop it that can make all the difference in, in getting the best out of it and and in kind of pushing yourself to be more creative and not always thinking you got to get everything right in the center of that crop right in the center of it sometimes the best stuff is literally just like cutting most of it away and just giving yourself like a little bit of that piece you know what I'm saying a little bit so um, let's I'm gonna do another I'm gonna do another little piece here. So I got this really cute girl in her cute little ponytail from 2010. I never learned how to do this ponytail. Um, I'm gonna line up the top of my crop with the top of the photo. I was messing around with this last night and I, I think I wanna keep part of her eye and I want to end it where her hand is right here so the tip of it won't get her hand. One of the great things about the, you know, the scrapbook companies is how they kind of made all of their kits and their products is designed for you to not have to think too hard about, you know, all of those things. You just put everything together. They like they took a lot of the guesswork out of of making really great layouts and really great, you know, if you wanted to make cards, if you wanted to make gifts, if you wanted to do memory keeping, they they took all of that guesswork out and made it really easy to use all their stuff and you blend it together and it just looks so, so good. And that was a really smart move on their part to get women to create and do stuff because they could feel confident that they knew how to do stuff. They, I mean, it all coordinates together, right? It's fantastic and a lot of us have a lot of those products because we we bought 
so much of their stuff. So now it's time to push ourselves a little bit more, pull some of those pieces out of their collections, out of your stuff and mix them in with other interesting things and kind of blend and mix up a little bit. So here's, here's her pulled out of her ad and now she's got just a tiny bit of her ass showing, just the tiniest bit. Now, wouldn't that be a cool journal card? Like think about her as a journal card, you know? Think about how you could fill up this white space with a, uh, you know, a verse, a quote, a lyric, like that would look so cool. Um, you could also cut her out. You could cut around her because she, this is a perfect cutting line and you could take her and then put her on an entirely different background and, and make her part of something else, you know, like because she has this fantastic white background, she would be easy peasy to put on something else. And then you have made a custom journal card, you know, like putting her on something entirely different, something that has like text on it. You know what I'm saying? Like that. So magazine pictures blended with some of your cool scrapbook paper could be super unique and super fun. That's experimenting. So this particular prompt was put in here to get you to think outside your, to be, to think outside being crafty and to think more like a creator because there's kind of a difference. So like, look at her on this one. Oh, isn't she cool? But it's hard to see that. It's hard to see that when you're looking at this. You know, you have to cut them up a little bit. You have to take them out of, out. she's trapped. She's trapped in this image and you gotta get her out and put her onto something entirely different to see her potential, you know, as a new, as a new, as a new creature. So like that's, I think a really fun, something really fun right there is seeing her like that. Like that's bomb. So. You know, my favorite is, you know, the ledger paper. Look how fun she is on this like authentic vintage ledger paper. If I didn't have this white to contend with, like how fun is that? See, and then this, this is introducing us back to the idea of that surrealism where you've added these images that clearly belong to something else and we've put it on a background that has nothing to do with where she came from. So now she's like a fish out of water being put into a different world. So it's like this very interesting balance of vintage and modern come together in our world, right? She's sort of like a little bit modern meets vintage. So just an idea, this we're one to inspire you to think about, you know, th these all new materials and cropping them in really interesting ways that would give you really unique ways of crafting that are just that nobody else can do. Um, that she right here, this girl, now this dress is, <laughs> there are so many things we could say about this dress, but her hair with the flowers, this is probably one of my favorite. I've had it forever. Let's see, this is super old. 2014, that's how long I've been holding on to that page. But her day has come. She's gonna be one that I hold, um, I'm gonna add her. She's probably gonna be my main picture here because I have this big one to fill and I need something amazing. So, um, so she's, uh, she's probably going to be my girl for that. And I wasn't sure what I was going to pick for everything. I love this girl hurt. This combination is stunning. I love the color with that pattern together. Um, she's another girl that I think is so interesting. She's got this little orange slice over her eye. You can see that like just doing that kind of crop because it's already kind of interesting. I can just do that right on top. I don't have to do anything weird, like cut it in an unusual way. It's already, it's already visually interesting. That's kind of a, a straightforward crop. Um, this one, uh, I wanted to show you, this one's interesting. This was an advertisement for, 
it looks like the Grand Tetons to me. I don't know, I could be wrong. But I wanted to show you, so this was an ad. Um, it just shows you what you can do with the crop, how it's all a matter of moving it around and how it shifts the power of the photo. So if you move it up, it puts the balance of like, now the text is down here, she's down here. It puts more of this emphasis up here. It shifts the balance. If you switch it this way, now it makes it even, look how interesting that is where she's really far down here at the bottom. Like that's one of my, probably my favorite version of it. That looks so cool to me. Like I, I love that. So it says our future has yet to be written. And if you do it with an even smaller one, you get that same, that same perspective. So instead of doing something like, to me, this is boring. This is just like a postcard. That's boring, boring, boring. Trying to like make it centered or even just make it like that. To me, it, it's more fun to either do it offset where she's in the corner. That's more interesting. Putting it so she's at the bottom, making the mountains more of like taking up the majority of the space. That's more interesting. Making her off to the side or making the image much smaller in scale and then making her like a tinier part of it and making it offset. So this was a really good uh, practice piece for me. If you come across something like that, you could do the same thing as play around with the proportion and where you like place your crop. You can practice what looks good to you because putting things centered like that, it's just not as powerful and you can really practice and train your eye um, to really see all the possibilities, you know, of what, what something has the potential to be. So I needed to get four or sorry, three pictures. I have also this one here. I think that was a shampoo. Was that shampoo? What was this? L'Oreal. It, so it's probably a hair color ad. Isn't that interesting? So this one could be this where I get a lot of the black image in it. This could also be a situation because it has this dark black is cutting it out like the surrealist style and then putting her onto a different image entirely. So that has the potential to be that too. So you could use her as a larger image. You could make it smaller and focus on the flower and just part of her little, her face. So this one has a lot of potential too. We see advertising like this all the time. And this one's awesome because there's no text that you have to work around. So. Consider magazines as one of your muses to work with and um, and incorporate into your crafting. There's magazines everywhere. If you um, if you live in a any kind of tourism, tourism has free magazines everywhere. If you live in a cool, some of you guys live in cool towns or cities where there's free tourism magazines everywhere. Um, the grocery stores often have free magazines uh, right by the exit and entrance. It could be about real estate, but they'll have gorgeous pictures in them that you can cut out and use for landscape. So just consider everything you see around you is a potential of, hey, there's a resource. Hey, there's another resource. Go by your library. Summer's just around the corner and oftentimes we end up being more light, more library visitors in the summertime. And a lot of libraries sell their magazines cheap, cheap, which is how I got most of the magazines that I have chopped up is uh, through that. I'll pay like I have. I haven't done that in years, clearly. <laughs> I've just been holding on to these. Um, anyway, so that's that's what I've done here. So I'm probably going to... I need to make some decisions about what I'm going to keep and toss and use for this experiment. Let's see. Actually, I don't think I even, I think I was going to leave it up to whatever one I decided. I don't even think I made a decision. Yeah, I didn't even, yeah, I didn't even decide. I was like, yeah, I'll just decide when I do it. So So 
See, the interesting thing is, is once you've cut one, like I cut this deliberately for her arm, but when I flip it over, look what's exposed. You know, sometimes you go for one picture and then you just happen to cut something weirdly on the other side. And I'm like, do I like that better? I kind of do. I kind of like it better. Maybe I will go with that one. I already have like, I mean, that one is not the end all be all photo like of all time. I like the color of that a lot. So it is just a matter of playing with things. And then I, I'm going to, I think I decided I was going to go with her. I, what I didn't decide on though, was how I was going to utilize this, uh, this young lass, if I was going to keep her background, which is a lot of green. There's a lot of green, green, green. I might cut her out and put her on a different background. And that's what experimenting should be because that's a lot of green and now I'm kind of I'm putting so much green here that now I'm sort of um, diffusing the cool factor so it's it's kind of becoming too much too much um, but if I take her out of her background so let me see what I have in um, Okay, so I have pre-cut paper, which is why I have encouraged everybody to pre-cut their paper so that you can do this process super, super easy. Like you can just grab your paper and go. So this is authentic um, ledger paper. It has real handwriting on it. That's like uh, from the 1800s. Um, she, she might, oh, sorry, 1902. So she might peak on top of that page, that might be an interesting, really cool way of utilizing her. I think I've made a decision on her. I think I'm just going to snip her out and that way I can really see. I, she is gorgeous. She is gorgeous, gorgeous. She's one of the prettiest models I've ever seen and her hair is just incredible. The way they got these flowers in her hair. I think the rest of how they styled her is very tragic, but they did a bomb job on her hair. I'm going to cut her earrings off because they're kind of impossible to cut properly. Okay. Kind of, this one kind of slowed me down. Uh, Wendy asked how much you guys, how much do you guys think is too much for a magazine? I, a used magazine from the library, personally, I wouldn't, I feel like a, I probably w wouldn't pay more than 75 cents for. Um, you can also buy magazines from thrift stores. Uh, that's another way of getting your hands on them. I know th several of the thrift stores that I go to or have gone to sell, um, sell them. If you go to antique malls, antique malls will even sell the, you know, really antique magazines, which are even more fun, uh, because you'll get your hands on those vintage. Okay, so um, she's kind of covering up all of the coolness on this page. Kind of, not all of it. 
but she looks so beautiful with the um, handwriting. It's kind of, I don't want to take that away from her. If I made her shorter, like not as tall, like brought her a little bit further down, there'd be more, um, why don't I do that? She doesn't need to show all of her business. Okay, so if I brought her down a little bit more, Okay, so that could be the bottom part of that. That's experiment one. Then we have this lovely lady and I could put her on the, a different background. I don't know if that's too much ledger. Okay, so I'm gonna just cut her because I kind of feel like that's what I've already decided I wanna do. And that will just, uh, I wasn't actually planning on doing either of these things. So that's kind of a uh, impromptu, impromptu experimentation. Um, I wanna have a nice balanced overall, overall kind of, so let me, I'm gonna, I'm going to keep experimenting and see. This paper is too short. It doesn't cover the backside very well. So I don't know that I will use that one. I am still looking in my little collection of papers back here, so which you might hear me rustling around. Um, let me see here. I have this green. If I turn the paper this way, It's kind of, it's, so this has got this kind of gold, um, mustardy, and then we kind of have this beigey. It's kind of like very gold. I don't know. It might, it, you might need, I might need a little bit more pop of color. So I'm going to keep trying here. Here's a map with the cool. Let me try that. That's a little bit more uh, graphic-y. It gives me a little bit more graphic. Here's some green. Let me flip, let me flip these. On this one, that's not the right, not the right fit. Okay, so if I do, if I do this one, see I could get away with doing this one because I can cut around this and take that. I wonder if that would look weird with the background showing behind the chair. There's only one way to know. Let me see, is there any other pictures in here that I would rather see? This one is cool because it has this really beautiful pink picture, like the pink flower. Um, I kind of want to make sure that I'm balancing the right, the, because the other thing I'm doing is also trying to balance the right colors into here. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just, I'm going crazy with cutting things up. I think I'm gonna end up with a six hour live at this rate. A six hour live. Okay, so I have Let's go back to what I originally started with, which is this. So I have that background, this, this, 
Am I cutting this off right? Ooh, I didn't think about that. Does that, nope, that fills the space just right. So if I use that, that will cover that entirely. <laughs> you won't be able to see it at all. So I need to find something else to put that on. Let me try this background, it's like a floral. I don't know, now that I've done it, now that I've cut all these pieces, I don't know, did I make the right decisions? I think there's just too much green. So, I think I like her for that. So just, I made my decision there. The, the thing I'm kind of wrestling with is, it, it's sort of the same principle as the honey and why I don't like to use the same honey on them. I don't like to use multiple honeys on one layout is because I don't like girls to have to share <laughs> the same thing because then you're competing. It makes them compete for your attention. So I give every honey her own little day in the sun. She doesn't, she doesn't have to compete. And so I'm sort of wrestling with that same thing here. Okay, so I think what I need to do here is cut this paper. However, I also do not want to have a eight hour live. So I think I'm going to just, okay. So I think that one will fit there. For her, she's gonna be there. And I'm, oh, can't use that one. That one's already. Okay, now I'm so confused. What was I, okay, I was gonna put this girl here. That looks, that looks more balanced. Except now I have that white strip at the top. Ah. Okay, what's on the back? Ah, oh, I can't, I cannot cut that. I don't wanna cut that. Uh, I trimmed this paper that it's on, so it matches the top of that one. So whatever I pick, it has to, um, it has to be, I have to put it on a backing so it has the same length of paper. So I think what I'm going to do is, let me see here, is, how about this? Okay. I'm going somewhere with this. Bye, Wendy. So on this one, I'm gonna cut away the top part of her hair and hand. Okay, I'm gonna cut away the top part of her head is what I'm doing. And then I can control the background and make it the length I want so it'll match. Okay. there so I so I'm gonna break my self-imposed rules and there's that wow this feels so good to use up these use some of my pictures that have just been just been moldering away just waiting for their little day in the sun. I love that. I don't hate that. That's kind of cool. 
That doesn't bother me. Okay, let's clear, I have such a mess. Okay, let's clear a little, some of my pictures. So now that I have cut these guys out, these are, they're now become like an embellishment source. So they're gonna probably need their own like little plastic bin because now they are like an embellishment. They're another option that I have now. So I shall treat them as such. And then this one that I cut up, I will put this into my scrap box because now it is another uh, piece of scrap paper that is just a smaller piece of scrap paper to choose from. Okay, so I'm just trying to clear some stuff off so I can sort of see better. You guys know how it is. You get too much stuff going on and then you can't see the crafty forest for the crafty trees. Okay. Okay, okay, all right. Let's move these girls over here. I am not hating this kind of thing. She feels a little tropical-y because of her hair and this is like, I don't know, it's giving me so many good vibes. I, I really like it. Okay, so I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take this page, which has got the higher cut to it so it matches the background. Um, this is the tricky thing about using pockets is you have to be aware of like what is on the back side. And, I, and because I deliberately cut those, um, I allowed the moon, that imi this image to be taller. It means I have to make these to be taller. Otherwise they are now gonna have a white strip showing. Okay, so this totally matches. This gives me like Palm Beach, Florida, which so does she. She gives me that. This does too, because I could say, oh look, she's, look, she's, um, does it? It does. I like it. It doesn't, She's a, she's a, she's a diver. She's like a treasure seeker. Yes. Okay, yes. So much yes. Okay, so let's, let's start gluing in these girls down. Let's do it. Okay, so, oh, look at that. She got cut out perfectly. But she's not who we're utilizing today. Well, I hope this girl is happy because she spent the best years of her life, she's 10 years older now, 10 years of her youth has been spent in a folder, waiting, waiting to be used for just this moment. And then this, this girl hiding her face behind an orange slice Ooh, I think what I want to do here is trim this little corner here. It's kind of like the edge of the page came right here and made this line really flat. So I'm gonna soften it so it doesn't look like it's so sharp. There. So now it doesn't bother my eye so much. And because we haven't seen them in a while, I'm going to add some of my little doodads here. Hopefully, oh, maybe I should, yeah, I should let that dry. Okay, last girl. She's spent. Oh, there's Drew Barrymore. 
So nine years she has spent sitting in my folder. Okay. Now with her, I am going to, these are kind of like my one, I'm a little one trick pony with these little silver, these little stars, but I just love them so much. I think I'm just gonna put them in her hair. It's a little bit too much glue. All right, how are my crafters doing? Those of you who are crafting with me, I don't know. Um, hopefully this is helping you, woo, helping you. Okay, so this was experiment. I'm gonna use this one since it's the largest. Uh, this was week 18. I think I'm gonna make it on, put it on her body instead of like just on the paper. And I'm gonna staple it on her. It'll pop being on the green, it'll really stand out. Where's my staple? Aw, uh, thanks Nita very much. That's very kind of you. Shelly is working on her planner pages. Are you working on your upcoming week? Okay, so there's our lovely, lovely girl. And then, okay, mm, this is a bit snug. Let's, let's trim this one ever so slightly. I think I might have glued it a little off and now it's not wanting to Somehow this is giving me Florida vibes because the girls feel a little tropical. She feels a little like Miami with her hair swept back. She, they're just, they're just like, yeah. She looks like, I don't know. She's giving me a little Gloria Estefan a little bit there. <laughs> so now forever when I look at this, I'm gonna be, be thinking, get on your feet. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, all right, let's see. So, am I, have I been putting, oh my gosh, look how long it took me just to get another page in here. Okay, so we got week 16, 17, and 18. Did I, oh, I did. Week 18, and I have this little tiny tab called Experiment. Oh, what should I do with this? There's nothing that says I actually have to put it on the, in the pocket at all. I could just, I wonder if it'll, I wonder if it'll glue on the plastic. Let's, let's find out. So the world may know. Okay, so experiment. Let's do it. Okay, there's week 18. Week 19 and all is well. Okay. Week 19, so we did week 18. Week 19, a list. Okay, so week 19 is starts with the list. So here is that. Let's move this over here. I got my crops. Okay, so here's a list. I got my little thingy and I said week 19. Okay, so let, let me get all this because I think I'm forgetting that I actually typed all this stuff up. So make sure I have all the tools I need. So here's how I decided that um, this was gonna go down. Okay, first of all, just one moment. One moment. So first of all, I need lip balm. 
I need something to sip. Pronto. Okay. Hey, Deborah Peterson. Hello, hello. Okay. Well, Deborah Peterson, you get your, you get your little uh, pockets out. That's what I'm here doing. I'm getting myself caught up. I have quite a few. So, here's your chance for follow through, lady. Um, hi, Mary Maples. She's working in her playbook, and now she's cutting up her Country Living magazine, which is an excellent magazine. Um, it's never let me down for doing the um, camp. Um, it's very, it has, a, it always does like a really good job in the summertime for giving a camp theme. Hey, Shelly Kay. Excellent. Yes, yes, yes. Looking forward to digging up. Uh, Miss Shelly Kay, I think you are, I, I'm very much looking forward to how you interpret this summer's glamping theme. Because I, when I was sharing with Mark, my vision for how we're going to do this. I specifically thought of you because you did such a fantastic job of interpreting your, um, the cover, how you completely re, um, imagined the cover of the playbook and you, you know, you, you, you styled yourself as if you were Vanessa and everything. It was so, so cute. So we're going to be having a, a different take on doing the camp theme. You know, you, we've done camp reset every summer or some version of camp every summer. So this will be the first summer that we do a kind of different version, a very unique, never before version of camping that's glamping, very glamping. <laughs> and instead of looking backwards in nostalgia, we're going to look forward at our future selves, very fabulous silver vixen selves. <laughs> and I think it's going to be so much fun. I think we are going to have so much fun imagining our little silver headed selves at our fabulous girl camp. <laughs> it's going to be super fun. Okay, so Miss Sabina is cutting out a catalog, finding pics to make a grid for her vision board. I think that sounds super fun. Jamie is doing great. She's one glue stick down and working on her second. Good job. Did I also see someone else who said they had a glue stick down? Did I miss that? Uh, I don't want to miss a glue stick down. Shelly says that she's trying to use up random planning stickers that she's been hoarding. Good. That's wonderful, Shelly. What? That's a good endeavor is finding ways to use up stickers. I have a little pile myself of stickers that uh, Mark has cut for me. You know, every time he would, you know, we would release something, he has made them for me as well. So I have a pile myself <laughs> that I have to do the same thing. Um, Yes, Justine, I love the I love the enthusiasm. Let's experiment. Bonnie says working on some fun tags today. Annie says, isn't it about time for someone to have a glue stick down? Exactly. I think Jamie is our glue stick down girl. Betsy says she is catching up on pocket pages. Eva, hello, hello. Good to see you, sister. Uh, Kelly says that Jeff finally gave her a break from yard work. <laughs> so she can we need to speak with Jeff pronto. It is not yard work, Kelly, Jeff. <laughs> Send him a message, Kelly. Let him know that you're, you are not, you are not yard work, Kelly. <laughs> you, are, you are craft social, Kelly. <laughs> right. Lee says, is this contest this year going to be show us your best house coat? <laughs> All right, Tamara says invitation for all to come glamp in her camper. I love it. Jamie Rose had the glue stick down. She is the first to announce her glue stick down. Good job, Jamie. It was me. It was me. Yes, Shelly Kay says, oh, yes, my ears totally perked up when you said glamping. That's my jam. Should look different from that first time I put up a tent in my bedroom. 
Yes, it should. We're gonna be we're gonna be fabulous, and we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be fabulous. That's for sure. Um, oh, Jen Lisa, thank you for joining us. We were so happy you got to spend time with us. Thank you very much for being with us. Um, hey, Jennifer Red Rose, good to see you. Just watching today. There you go. Eva says you're embracing your wisdom. <laughs> your silver highlights. That is exactly what the theme of 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 our our glamping, our camp time. It is going to be about flourishing in our in our embracing our future selves because with that comes wisdom. With wisdom, which we we want to embrace isn't that the like the most wonderful part about growing older is it comes with all of that glorious wisdom which is what's more precious than gold it's more precious than gold or silver so yay so i hope that you guys uh join us for that we're going to be opening up the clubhouse doors at the end of the month and that is what our activity is going to be and then we'll also i will be also offering a standalone separate workshop that will allow you to do the the activity um so that's an optional thing so that's just a, across the board for everybody the the one there'll be one activity that's going to be a standalone thing and if you want to do that this fun little um book related thing that you're going that can that you make that is going to be the standalone project um we'll also have uh the mini me adventure workshop that is available now but there'll be that and we're going to be doing some extra projects as part of the clubhouse and one of them will be an updated little making a future little mini me so uh so if you hadn't made one before that little workshop will be available to show you the little basics so um well not little because it's a it's the most robust workshop i've ever put together it's pretty awesome so um so Bonnie says that she she does love a pretty house coat. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. Exact Eva, you you are correct. And I think that will that will definitely be happening uh for the summer. I think we you will see those little those type of honeys will be making their way um into the collection is those with those little silver our little silver vixens did you guys know that that's what you call a female fox is a is a vixen so i'm using it intentionally it is it is it is purposeful okay so whew. all right jumping back into it week number 19. so week number 19 is list and for me, I have this sitting up here. This is what I made in the clubhouse. It's my finish list. I challenged everybody to make a list of projects that they can reasonably complete by the end of the spring, uh, by July 1st, you know, but wh whichever is technically first so uh the joyful journal project that is these are mine so uh the easy version not the not the Corey pulling out all the stops doing doing things on the level that i always want to do them so my easy get it done just get it done version that is going to that's on my list um host a pocket art challenge live catch up <laughs> so check that will be i will check that off at the end of today uh build the summer content for the clubhouse um i i feel pretty i feel pretty good about that i um i feel pretty good about saying i my my part of it has been complete um i have help doing that more help this year than I have, so I kind of feel like, yeah, I could say that I've done that. So then you'll notice I have these little, my little sus face eyes looking at me like, you better complete this. Pretty much to match my little Mr. Miyagi who's staring at me all day long with the, you, you stand the floor, paint the fence, <laughs> wax the car. 
All day long he's staring at me with judgment, <laughs> giving me his judgy face. Isn't he so cute? Now, I don't know what character he actually is. I got him from uh, one of the most awesome uh, Shibuya station in Tokyo. The one, it's that one intersection that has like a million people that passes through it each day. They have all of these gumball machines. They're, that's not the right word for them. The machines where you put a coin in and you get a, you get the big capsule out of them and they're they're full of toys is what they are and this popped out this was what i got out of mine and i love him i love him i don't know who he is or what cartoon character he is or anything i just love his judgmental little face <laughs> so i named him mr miyagi um i love him dearly and he just sits on my desk and looks at me sternly all day so he is he is my coach my the captain of my finish list and I'm getting, I've been getting stuff done on this. So I didn't want to just pop this list into the pocket. What I plan on doing is copying the things that are on it onto one of these. So I am taking, I have technically four things on the list. I'm going to put one in each side of my pocket. So I, that's pretty much what I'm doing. I, I think that's what I'm doing. I think that was my plan. Um, let me see here. Is that what I'm doing? Yes, I am putting each thing on a journaling sticker. So all I have to do is decide which which ones do I want? Which little pieces and parts do I want in here? And I think what I was going to decide is because this has to face the girls, is I just needed to pick the papers that were going to look the best facing them. So that's why I didn't pre-pick. It's like, well, whatever looks good with these girls. So already I'm loving the honeycomb with them. That was actually my first pick for this project because I always love a good hexy. Also, I love a good black and white print. So don't hate that, but I'm going to keep looking. Also, I'm going to go test that one. That's got more yellow and teal at the bottom. This is why I always tell you guys, leave this little strip at the bottom. That just gives so much character. It just gives a little extra something. And look at the difference. Can I just show you? Look how I've given myself options because I left that strip. What This one's got black and white at the bottom and this one has got a little bit of pink teal and that mustard so now these are not identical if i cut that strip off they would be but now i've given myself two different squares that can give me two different pieces so i really love this because now i have something to play against this orange and i love the hexy that mustard also plays well with the orange and echoes over here with the yellow, so I don't hate that. But I wanna make sure that I'm making a good choice. Do I like that better? Kinda like the black and white little speckles better. So I think I'm going with that. That's gonna face here. So these are gonna be where I put um, one of the finished list items on here and then on the back side, uh, what am I going to decide there? So the back side is going to be the same principle. I'm going to make the decisions what papers I pick once I get the next <laughs> page done because these are not as important as the images I picked. Those I can't, I can't adjust. They are who they are. So I will do it that way. So I'm going to pick um, these items. I need to take a quick little break. So, um, I will be right back in about, um, everybody, you know what, it's a good time for a quick little bathroom break, get yourself a fresh drink, and how about we come back in 10 minutes. Um, I'm sorry, I should have taken a break when I was in between my pages, but you know how it goes. So uh, I will be back in about 10 minutes, and that way I can freshen up my drink and such. So. Okay, so everybody do what you got to do and we'll see you back here in 10 minutes. Okay.
Hello, and we're back. Hey, Miss Sue Wilson. Uh, Sue, where are you in the world where it's 11 o'clock where you are? Inquiring minds. Okay, so where was I? I am, my plan is to get uh, the my finish list and the answers to my finish list on one answer to each little square I got going here. Sorry. There we go. And I am decided that I was going to use up some of my stickers um, to do that, to record my answers on. So I have like a writing space to do it on. So I think I'm going to use some of my journaling labels to do that because I love them so much. They are a favorite of mine and they'll look cute on here. So I think what I'm going to do is like stagger them on either side. Oh, Sue, you're in Paris, France. We have had an international day today. I am so happy that you have been able to join us. I'm not sure when you joined, started joining us, but welcome. And thank you for jumping in. Okay, so let us, let me see here. I want to, I like having really contrasty um, colors together. So blue and mustard are pretty contrasty. And the other thing I like to do, especially if I'm going to do this, is kind of cut it off at a fairly, fairly big angle. I, I'm sorry, not big not angle cut it off like at a certain point on the label so it's kind of like offset 
like this is what I mean. See how I'm kind of, I'm about to cut off part of the label so it's cut off like so. So I'm going to write my answer on this so I better write it pretty, pretty tiny so it all fits on there. Also, where is my pen? There it is. So my answer to the question is joyful journal project. I finally found my joyful journal. Okay, that was something I was supposed to launch a year ago. Okay, so there's, that's my first answer. Second one is host, let me see here, host a pocket challenge. So I think on this one, it's pink seems like it would be a good, a good one. I'm feeling pink, but the question is, Which pink? The one with writing on it? I think I'm gonna put this one all, almost all the way in and then cut it off like there. Like this way. And host a pocket art challenge. live ketchup which I have done so on this one how do I show that I've done it um that's a good question I know what I'll do I'm gonna put like a box I'm gonna put like a box and I don't know how big to make these boxes, so I probably need to make this one bigger. That one's pretty big. <laughs> so, let me see. This one might be too small. Okay, so this is what I think would be cute. If I can find dots. Okay, so here's what I wanna do. I want to put, let me see. I don't know if the stars are too big or if they even make sense. I don't know if like it will, yeah, so you can't really even tell with the star. So I wanna see if I put a dot inside of them, will it look like I checked it off? Like, you know, like you put a little mark inside of something to make it look like I'm done. It probably would have helped if I made the box a little bigger. This box is pretty large, so that one will be a little bit more obvious. Obvs. So this one is not complete, but it will be. And then this one is complete as of today. Also, um, I need some tabs. Squares, die cuts, circles. I need to make like a tab for this. Haha, -ha, I do have tabs. Yes. So much yes. Okay. And they're pretty cute, cute ones too. Okay. So what I want to do is make a set of tabs for this so that I can label this with the prompt. This is, uh, what did I say it was? This was week 19 and it was list. So we're gonna put um, 
Week 19, we'll put it on the front. And then on the back, we'll put... I'll make it on the skinnier side than I normally do. I also uh, make a point of not really trying to cut these very perfect and straight. I kind of like them wonky. So week 19 on this side, and then on the back side is a list. Okay, and then I'm gonna staple this on here. Being that it's such a little pocket, it's just gonna be st stuck in here anyway, so now you can clearly see what it is. Hopefully that, oh, Corey, really? You didn't think that through, did you? I don't think I can fit my pocket in there now. I, I think I needed to wait before I did that <laughs> because I still have to get the paper in there. I got too excited. Oh. Okay, I think I might have to, I'm also afraid I'm gonna hurt myself with these scissors. Okay. This is gonna be the plan, but I can't do it yet. I have to, um, I have to wait. I gotta get the paper in there first before I be, be stapling stuff, cause they, the other side needs to get shoved in there. Okay, so I'm gonna pause on week 19 because as I said earlier, I have to get other pocket that faces so there's an, another pocket page that's going to face here i need to pick the paper so it matches this page that's the priority okay so let us let us move on to that oh 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 one second i just realized so the week 20 is what i'm gonna skip to right now skip 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 to my loo so week 20, I am using these kind of odd, these are kind of an odd page. These are meant for A5 sized pocket pages. So if you have an A5 sized ring bound planner, you might like these because you can add fun little pockets in there. Um, these are kind of unique and they're smaller, so they do not have, these are not three by fours, these are a smaller. They seem like you could fit like a business card or maybe a credit card or some kind of card of that nature. So I made my own little photo crop. I made a custom sized photo crop um, for this and I labeled it. It's an A5 template is what I call it. So all the papers match this size and they will fit into this uh, pocket sheet. So that is what I did when I purchased this particular set. Now, what I am doing uh, for this particular one, this prompt for week 20 is favorite. And um, because I have been planning the summer content and thinking about our summer theme and thinking about, um, I've had that on my brain a lot in the last, you know, week or two. So that's where I kind of got these, got inspired. And I'm not sure if you have heard of Iris Apfel, but she is very iconic and she is <laughs> quite an inspiration. Uh, so that is what I picked is she's a, she is a hoot. So she is a favorite uh, icon to me uh, in terms of like her, her, her jewelry is crazy pants. When I was a little girl, I thought my grandma knew like was a jewelry maven. She was uh, very much into costume jewelry. And I thought 
because of the amount of jewelry my grandma had, my grandma had, you know, think about the set. Okay, so I'm a Gen Xer, so my grandma had all of this jewelry from like the late 60s, the 60s into the 70s. And it was all of, it was like plastic and it was, a lot of it was plastic. Uh, it was uh, like, or resin or oh, what's that other cool plasticky, um, material that they used to make jewelry from and it's actually kind of it's very valuable now and collectors are look for it i cannot think of what it is ah, called now but they um it's not melamine it's something else help me out help me out girls um so anywho she had lots of costume jewelry and i loved 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 playing with it i just thought she she just Bake light, thanks Penny. That's exactly what it is. So I'm sure some of you might have had a, a fabulous grandma who had a lot of that costume jewelry, lots of gaudy pieces, because costume jewelry was like such a big thing with ladies in that time period. And so it was it was something that I loved playing with and loved dressing up with because it made you feel like you were a queen. <laughs> you could play royalty with it. So this lady, she is fabulous with all of her crazy jewelry and her crazy black glasses. She is lovely. She just reminds me of this fabulous little, just, I don't know, like this glorious little bird with all of her, you know, what is that bird? There's a particular bird that loves um, gathering up all the, all the little fancy little pieces there's a there's a particular bird that's very attracted to all the little fancy things like shiny things i cannot think of what that name of the bird is anyway she is an she's an icon in the <laughs> and she's an icon uh from her like even though she's she's had a quite a glamorous life but it's really from her 80s on um that has she is really lit up um, I guess the world of fashion. So like she became very, very famous for this in her eighties. She's 101 years old now. So I don't know. So with thinking about our theme for the summer and stuff, it, she just really kind of struck me. So I thought she was really fabulous. So I found some different photos of her that I wanted to kind of encapsulate. You notice her very bold black glasses. You may have, you might recognize her. Um, she's featured, she's been featured a lot more like recently, I guess she's done advertising. I don't, I don't get any magazine out. I don't have any magazines. I don't watch television. I don't, I, I don't have any current <laughs> knowledge of things any longer. Um, I have kind of unplugged from society, but just looking on Pinterest for pictures of her, I have noticed that she has, there's a lot of current ad campaigns featuring her. So that's when I noticed so there you go eva <laughs> you're gonna perfect that's what we want there you go jonna yes there yes there is a documentary about her so i decided i wanted to feature feature her because she and jewelry are just to me so fascinating her jewelry collection is just absolutely fascinating to me as fascinating as i used it used to be for me and my my grandma's jewelry looking at it so um i so so thinking about like what i just did over here with these girl pictures i think that's what i planned on doing here with these is cutting her out of her backgrounds and putting her in here also these pictures for some weird reason i don't know why but the printing process my pictures are, have been printing a little bigger than what their size because I am very specific about telling it what to you know what size they are so not sure so they she might be cut a little oddly when I go to cut cut them but, but that's okay it, it just it is what it is yes Eva says I like how she has no fear of color me too and when I was listening to her I, I l listened to like a really brief interview um, with her the uh, other day, she was talking about her life and how she got into um, 
design, uh, interior design, is actually how she got into design in general. And she was talking about how it was really like um, clothes from other countries that really taught her about design and structure that really you know inspired her and her and her husband traveled to a lot of countries to import things that's where she got a lot of her influence so when you look at like her design aesthetic is very very much incorporates a lot of things from she has a very international flair i i think that's very interesting so she's definitely not boring <laughs> she's not oatmeal that's for sure so for for that alone like there's a lot that she she just made me think about because for those of us who have worried a lot about what other people think um there's a lot to be learned from ladies like that and she talked about that in her interview you know about life being very short and you know and not and how important it was to not be concerned about certain things in life and um I don't know, she, it was very interesting and very interesting take on things, <laughs> especially, you know, as somebody who's a believer, you know, you, you, you kind of like, it's hard not to, to forget about the scripture about how, uh, thinking about, um, is it, and I think it's in first Peter about talking about, you know, not being, not being as concerned about. The way we wear our hair and our the bobbles and all of the you know all the stuff that we tend to you know have a tendency of prioritizing <laughs> over the thing that's most important like our our spiritual our spiritual selves so it's kind of it's just kind of funny it's like i hope that the way that she looks physically is how i look spiritually <laughs> I hope that's what I look like on the inside. Like this much is going on on the inside. Is that a thing? Can that be a thing? Okay, so let me see. How do I cut this this version of her? So I, I did think of some fun little uh, projects and challenges we can do with 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 this in mind, you know, being our little more of our little fearless selves, you know, when when you use your imagination, will you be like like uh, what Eva was saying, be like a, a little Edna? What will your little Edna self be like? <laughs> your fabulous self where you're like, I don't care if I look like I'm wearing a Muppet. I will do what I want. Okay, so now that I've I've at least trimmed them down so they're like within the, they're, the width of them is trimmed down to the paper. Now I'm going to, um, okay, so how I planned on doing this is, let me get my, the backgrounds down. And then I am gonna cut them out I got a little theme of that going on. I actually had planned on doing that. It was the other girls in the modeling shots that I didn't plan on doing that to. So I think it is so interesting when you cut out backgrounds and you just let people like take their pictures out of context. It just really it is it's so game changing how it what that does to a picture uh eva tracy to answer your question this is one giant glass Okay, I don't have a...
I think what I want to do on this one is like cut the table off. So that's going to cut part of her hand, but I'm going to live with that. Okay, so make, it might look better on that background like that. I wonder if I could resurrect. <laughs> I had the, I cut the top part of her hair off thinking I needed to keep the bottom. But I wonder, woo, here it is. Okay, I know this is silly, but I think I wanna try to keep the top part of her hair intact. So there's the top part of her hair. I'm just gonna <laughs> glue it. <laughs> I am just gonna glue it back. Okay. Okay, and now I'm going to... Do this. This... I wonder if she's such a, a very small person. I wonder how much her jewelry weighs when she walks around with it. Like this, look at, look at that. Look at this. Look at that neck, these necklaces. That's, that's some heavy jewelry there. Okay, so here's that one. There's that one. I'm almost done with this one. She is like a very rare exotic bird. She kind of reminds me of my other grandmother. My other grandmother was very well traveled and she got to do a lot of things and she was not this fabulous, not by a long shot, but she was very f kind of more frail and small and outspoken like she is. Look how cute that is. That's adorbs. Isn't that fun? That's fun. She makes it fun. I didn't have to do a single thing. I, I don't have to do anything, but I'm gonna do something because when I was looking, through my stuff, I was like, you know what? I I can't help but feel like some of my embellishments might be kind of fun to throw in here um, and enhance some of her jewelry. You know what I mean? So I don't know, I could be wrong, but I am gonna see if there's anything in here I have like, if there's anything tiny, I don't know if I have anything tiny enough to fit the scale, but I just wanted to see. These little stars are teeny tiny. They're like tiny, tiny. And these ones, these are like little sequins. Just to add like a little bit of visual interest, I. I might throw some like, I wonder if I could put something in her glass. She's got this like empty glass, you know? What if I threw some little gold hearts in her glass? Just something that's like, breathes a little bit of dimension in, in here. Like see, right there. Already that's kind of cool. I don't know, no one can, no one can really tell. I think it'll fit in the pocket. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna put some of these gold hearts in her glass, cause that glass be empty. And I'm gonna throw some of these little dimensional wood um, beads into her necklace. <laughs> and that's fun. And then what else can I do? I might, this one would kind of blend in a little bit. So we'll and throw that one in there. And then, cause you gotta, you, they have to kind of not like stick out too much. Cause 
Hey, Robin. Ah, awesome. Okay, so she has this little turquoise necklace on, which I love this color combination so much. want to see if I had anything in this color combination I might try to see this kind of like teal color and throw it in there and see if I could enhance color is that the color the same I'll try that okay all right so that's my plan I wanted to kind of um, enhance her jewelry by ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. here's some gold sparkles did I want to do something with that? Mm, not really. Okay, so that's my plan. We're going to take Miss Iris and we're going to bling her out a little bit more. So let me, I'm not sure if these are the right kinds of glues, but hopefully. I just thought this would be so fun. Hey, Miss Justine. Okay, so there's all of those. So what if I did these hearts? But I did them upside down. Those are two. I'm not sure if those are the right shade nope those are not the right shade Oh, my Lanta. That's what happens when you don't have everything matching the way you want. You just have to make do. Okay, so I need a, oh, also I have not glued her down either. Should probably have done that first. So much easier to uh, glue them down and then be speckling them with stuff. So I'm going to have to glue around her. 
I think putting her on this teal background, I wasn't sure if that was a good call or not, but. Now that I look at it, I think my um, my plan was actually the opposite. I think my plan was to put her on here. I wonder if it's too late. It is not too late. Let me see. <clears throat> Oop. I think this was my plan. Okay. Right? <laughs> they do, don't they? She, it, it definitely looks like it would be very heavy jewelry, but she's definitely been doing it a long time. The documentary I watched, um, she has always been fabulous, though. When she was a, a younger woman, she has always been just... She kind of had a, a sort of Jackie Kennedy sensibility about her when she was a younger woman. She wore, like, the little head scarves, and she just had a very kind of... Just always... Always uh, very... Cla a classic sense of fashion about her very much in my mind very similar to Jackie O. kind of think that this needs a little bit better balance is that better I think that's better that's better okay now Okay, now we're going to take a glue stick and a picker. Okay. Uh, Eva, I just saw what you said about how they could be hollow. I think that's a good point. They can't, that's a very good point. Maybe they are hollow and then they wouldn't be. I saw pictures of, of her like in other countries too buying you know buying some of her jewelry in other countries agree jonna and justine i totally agree like the the rings i have on right now as soon as the live stream is over i will rip them off my fingers <laughs> Like just even that tiny bit, the bracelet I have on the that I will be like, I can't wait to get these off. I used to love jewelry. I would wear multiple rings. I just love, love, loved all of that. But now it's like I can't wait to get rings and earrings and all that off of my. Uh, 
Okay. Oh man, I can't get this to stick the same way. I wonder if I need to use a different glue. All right, this, these little guys are just really persnickety. So I'm gonna put a little dot of glue where I'm gonna put a thing. I don't know. I hope if anybody was behind Hi, Claire. Welcome to the live stream. Hope if anybody was behind in doing their pocket art, this is it. You have gotten your chance, whether you're able to join me live or you're watching me as a replay viewer. Hello and welcome. Um, I'm so terrible at welcoming replay viewers. It's just awful. I always think in terms of the live, but I don't. I am not as good about welcoming people to the replay. So I apologize. Hello, Replay Club viewers. Because I think there's a lot of Replay Club viewers for everything. Um, but however you are watching, I hope that this is your chance is now and you are getting it done. Things are getting done. So... I have embellished each of her pictures with something. That's super funny. Yes. <laughs> Jonna, so much yes. Um, okay. So here, it, here she is. I'm kind of, uh, I'm a little nervous about sticking her into pockets. At least that one for sure. This one, I don't, these two I'm not sure about because I'm not sure how these ones are fine probably. So let's get this. Let's get this. So let us see. Uh, this is making me nervous. Goodness gracious. Okay. My goodness. That one went way easier. That was just slip slip. Okay. If this one is cut narrow enough, it will not give me any grief. That's the sticking point is I'm just not having it. I will just cut you and cut the background and then we won't have, we will not have this tomfoolery. I think that putting something thick um, like these embellishments probably takes up part of that space you have. Okay. So there's, there's that, and then there's this one. I'm a little, I don't know. I'm so impatient. I'm just like, let's shove it in there. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? Um, uh, favorite. So here's the little, where's, where's the other thing? Where do I have that? This was week 20. This was week 20, and favorite and then so I feel like um, this one with the orange is probably the best one to put it on because it's so uh, it's so f bright so I think what I'm going to do is 
I think I'm going to kind of trim it down a little bit. Get it ready to be... Okay, so, and it slipped in there really easily, so I think I'm gonna get her in here. Ooh. Oh, phew, that one went in, okay. Now, this one. Okay, so I think I'm going to trim this down. Trim and trim and trim. Hi, Michelle Spencer. And I'm gonna cut it and then I'm gonna staple it so it matches the edge a little better. And it's wonky because we love wonky, right? I don't know if she's got children or not, but I would imagine she would have she would make a very colorful grandmother. Okay, so now so now we can finish the finish prompt, the finish list. I am looking around for it. Uh hmm. Okay, here it is. Okay, so here's what I said. So this one I wanted to look really good, but this one, and then when this flipped over, I wanted this to look really good with this one. So what I choose here needs to look good with that. So the squares, the squares, the squares. Okay, so um, we don't want to go too crazy because we got a lot of color over here. So something, you know, that one's good because it also looks good with this here, which the stuff that you can actually see, that looks good. Um, uh, oh, okay, Jonna, thank you. Uh, Iris Apfel, Miss Justine is her name, Iris Apfel. Very colorful, very interesting woman. Okay, and I don't hate that. I think this is kind of a lovely echo to this blue outfit she has on. This kind of mirrors that, and this I don't hate with that. It's the same kind of color tone, this, uh, what is that, color value as this green hair, this orange. I love it. Done. Okay, so let's... Let's finish this up. Okay, plus this is going to be the back of that, so that'll look good too. So, 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 um, what do I gotta do here? I need to get the last prompts on here, so I need this. So now I need to pick the right sticker. So when you do blue, a really good contrast for blue is usually something like coral, uh, depending on the shade of blue, but coral tends to be a really great, have you ever seen like navy and coral together? Ah, oh, delicious, they sing. So I, my eye immediately goes to coral. Um, on this side of it, I was not consistent with where I placed the stickers, so I don't have to be consistent how I place it over here either. So I think I'm going to do it on this outer edge and do it like that. I'm going to, all I'm really trying to do is kind of just offset it, I guess. I think it looks more cool offset than centering it. Um, where's my list? So another, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. um, build summer content for clubhouse. Oh wait, what did I say I was gonna do though? Did I say everything I was gonna do? 
reset. I, what's really missing on here is reset your health. So this should be reset your health. This, okay, this is build your summer content. This is reset your health. Okay, these boxes I'm putting on here are basically big check boxes. Hi, Debbie Farnham. Good to see you. Thank you, Justine. I agree. I agree with you 100%. Okay, and then for this one, what is good? We got this beautiful minty color, which will look really good over here because she's got this lovely, the hair, the minty over here. So loving the mint. I actually don't mind it kind of floating for a change. I think that's a nice change of pace. We'll do a floating one. Um, Build summer content, right? Yeah. Oops. Okay. And then when I am complete with those things, I'm gonna use a really colorful dot to, to put in the little check marks and that will bring the color in because right now they're a little blah, um, but that will bring that little pop. As you can see right here, I use this little lime green one. I'll put one there. So that will bring a teeny little punch in there, but they're also facing Miss Iris and she's got a lot going on <laughs> just being her fabulous self. So I'm gonna put this back on here. Um, I don't know if I have a, I hate wasting these tiny delicious little staples, but I should have not stapled it so soon. Okay, so now I, oh wait. Hmm, I just thought of something though. I'll be in the same pickle because then I won't be able to pull the card out to put the little check mark on. I can get around it if I just put the dot on top of the card though, or on top of the pocket. Then that sort of, there's that. Right? How about I just do one staple and uh, and then I love how this is kind of matching like on this side, it lines up with her little red ensemble there. Okay, so done and done. So that's week 20. And now we're on the back side of Miss Iris um, and we have week 21. There's my finish list, which is going back up on the my desk. So I will not, not lose track of it. Um, where's my notebook? Okay. Oh. Okay. Week. So there's, so that was week 19. Uh, week, I'm sorry. That was, I already finished week 19. No, wait, I, okay. I just did two actually. So I just finished week 19 and I finished week 20, both. So now is week 21 with number so the prompt is numbers or letters you can do either and I am opting to do numbers so let me pull that pocket back out again and let me move this out of the way so here's what I have to work with is these four um, pockets so I pre I pre picked um, so this is one of those situations where I pre-picked my materials and what I was going to do because that's very time saving. So you guys are not sitting here watching me do <laughs> so many things. 
trying to figure out what am I going to do? I have really tried to bring different ideas to this live stream. So it was not, I didn't want to phone it in and just kind of like do bait. I, I wanted to give you guys some different ideas. Um, so it felt like you were getting some, you were getting value for the time you're putting into this live stream. Okay. So here's what I did is I sketched out how I wanted to do this and I wrote out, um, I sketched, I'm sorry, wrote and sketched, um, how I wanted to do this color combination. So I have these really fun little, uh, tickets and they come in packs based on color. So I figured out which, uh, combination I want to do. So I have a white and orange combination. Then I have a green and pink. Then I have a wood and yellow. And then I have this little stripey and green. So these are my, the four little pockety things. And uh, I'm doing numbers. And so what I wanted to do is the year I was born, 1971. Oh, hey. Where are my little 1971 babies? Um, and I am thinking I want to do some fabulous gold glitter numbers to highlight that because those of us who are celebrating a 1971 birthday, uh, I mean, I know we're all celebrating a birthday this year. <laughs> That's how birthdays work. Um, but just saying 1971. Oh, hey. <laughs> uh, Marie Louise, you did two weeks. I'm proud of you. You did two weeks. You know, the, here, here's the thing, Marie Louise. To be fair, to be fair to all of you, there are no pocket police in your house. For all I know, you guys are messing around, not doing anything. How do I know? How do I really know what you're up to? You could be watching me with your feet up doing nothing. I wouldn't know. I assume that you're, you're sitting here scrapping with me. You're, you're doing stuff with me, but I don't know this is completely on in a, a trust system. It is a pocket trust. We are the sisterhood of pockets right now, right? It is, it, it is complete trust system. So I'm proud of you. If you choose to be pocketing with me, here's my, what if I just made a big assumption that I have glitter numbers? <laughs> I'm all planning this out and I, I didn't even check. There we go. Justine says I'm a 71 baby. Eva, today is your birthday. How wonderful. Okay. We must, we must sing you happy birthday. Okay. Whew. All right. I, I definitely have. I have some stickers. Eva, that is so fantastical. Okay. We have to, I have to sing happy birthday to you. Um, I have to get my, I, my fellow, my fellow singer henceforth. It's Eva's birthday. Eva? Eva. Eva. Yes. All right. Ready? Me, 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 me. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Eva. Happy birthday to you. All the monkeys in the zoo give their best regards to you. Happy birthday to you. Do, 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 do. Happy birthday. Well, what a, what a joy. Thank you for choosing my my little live stream to spend some of your birthday time. I think uh, I think last year I spent my birthday doing a live stream. <laughs> I almost did that this year. My birthday was on Saturday last Saturday, but uh, I decided that I was I would spend my birthday with the Lord. That is what I opted to do. So I had a quiet birthday. Mark was not here. I was by myself and I had a, I had a birthday with by myself. 
it was a little, it's a little, it was a little different, but yeah, I, I, I made the decision to do it a little differently than I normally do. So I am, I am very, I'm very honored that you're spending part of your, <laughs> your birthday day with, with me and with, with friends, with part of the, with the reset community. So yay. Okay. So, um, also, uh, I wish I, Eva, I wish I had one of your, your goodies with me. Um, I know that I actually have some of your stuff out in my, I have some of your stuff out in a bin in my garage, but you guys know that Eva, Eva is, is from, she actually has a brand. <laughs> she is, she has the Evalicious um, Crafts is an actual brand, like a scrapbooking brand. I have put her, um, I have put her materials in, in my kits in the past. So I'm trying to remember what I actually, I have something of yours in my, in my stuff out there. And I have put some of, I also have put something of yours in, in our mystery boxes as well. So Deborah says, I'm sitting here doing nothing. <laughs> I could say that I'm gathering ideas. Well, Deborah, I appreciate your honesty. Honesty is the best policy. <laughs> I love it. Um, hi, Andrea, I see your little face. Hello, hello. Yay. Okay. Andrea says she's also going to be honest. She has got her feet up and she's watching me. But on another note, she's mostly caught up with your pocket pages. Andrea, I'm, I'm happy that you got, you got your feet up. Look, you, you are a busy girl and, and what you do, the work that you do, you, you, you take care of people and contribute to life saving and in healthcare. I'm okay if you're, you got your feet up and you're, <laughs> and you're just watching me today. I'm not judging you. <laughs> and also, um, I am proud of you though, for keeping up with the challenge, even with every, everything that had been going on in your life. So I'm really happy you're here and I'm glad that you're, you've been keeping up with your creative life. Um, I'm sure working in the healthcare industry is, uh, extremely challenging and I can only imagine what it's like being in Canada that that's that's completely that's very different than what it's like here in the States on top of it so um, I am proud of you that you've been doing that so there we go Michelle's also doing nothing well I <laughs> Jonah. she has a camera in my room yeah I appreciate there's a lot of honest girls here <laughs> It's okay. It's okay, you girls. To be honest, I get the feeling that for the most part, there's a lot more watchers. <laughs> for a lot of times, there's a lot more watchers. And it's fine because um, I was a watcher for most of my time. Um, I've had to really push myself to actually do stuff. So for the most part, you guys have helped, kept me accountable to actually being crafter, being crafty. Because since the last time you saw me do a pocket, I haven't done a pocket. So um, I am not any different than you. I do not craft for the like for the fun of it. I, I don't sit here quietly crafting for fun. If the camera is not on me and I'm not forced to do it, <laughs> I don't do it. I would much rather do something different. That's just not how I would prefer to do this. I prefer to spend my time, to be honest with you, to be completely honest. However, when I conceptualized the pocket crafting challenge, I just really, I always, you know, I think about us as a community and largely how the reset community as a whole um, was really based upon just being creative in general, whether it was being in the planner. Um, and the planner was really the first place that I ever started getting creative. And you know why? Because it's full of boxes. The planner's full of boxes. It's full of like 
very specific places to craft in. And for the first time I was like, oh, I can, I just have this one little box to fill. I have this one little corner to fill up. So it gave me a boundary to work in. And that is what I have found the same principle with pockets. It's the same thing. I have a place to fill. I know that I can only work in this very small spot. So it feels very safe. I am not expected to fill this whole page. That's so overwhelming to me. When I open a, a you know, a bullet journal or a mixed media, you know, uh, book, that's, oh, it's so much. Although I know I said that and then I'm going to tell you about our project <laughs> for summer and I will be completely contradicting myself, but, <laughs> but that will be different. That will be different. Um, this is not like that. This is, you know, pockets are just so different. They're so small and I look, look how much stuff I was, I'm able to bust out. I just, this I can manage, this I can do. I really enjoy them. So, oh my gosh. So Andrea, you worked last night. You're going back in half an hour. What? <laughs> See, not everybody can do that, Andrea. That's a calling. That really is. So I am, I'm very proud of you. <clears throat> Bye, Justine. See you in the replay club. And uh, Nita's catching up. Not quite there yet, but she is. And yes, Jonna, I, I support that decision. Pull out those hand weights, do a few reps. Agreed. And also, Jonna, I got myself a red light mask. I, I pulled the trigger. I finally did it. I, uh, I put it on in the session in the clubhouse, the Esther's spa session. I did it. I love it. Hopefully it's going to work for what I bought it for. So, Hey, Miss Melissa Roberts. Good to see your little face. Okay. So I'm at week 21. I'm getting down to, I'm getting down to it. Getting down to, I'm, I'm, fairly sure this this week is week 22 and then we would c come to week I'm a, I'm a little I don't know I don't remember now what I looked at so either the week ahead is week 23 or this week we just ended is week 23 in which case I'm kind of already I'm already behind <laughs> how did I just do eight weeks and I'm behind um but I got a I gotta tell you, I got nothing left in me. I think um, the the next um, the next one is currently. That's the next prompt. So can I just take a picture of myself going <laughs> and put it in there? Currently, this is this is the condition I'm in. Oh my gosh, Melissa Roberts says you're in Vegas on vacation. You're resting and watching us. Hello. And you're at the Coca-Cola store yesterday and it's the anniversary of the perfect harmony song commercial that was aired first in 1971. Melissa Roberts, can I tell you a stupid little story? When I was a little girl, I got one of those little recording, the little recorders that a lot of us got as, as a Christmas present, birthday present. I recorded myself multiple times <laughs> singing that song. I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. <laughs> Except I didn't know all the words and I totally made up my own words and I can still remember part of my song. <laughs> Which I, I just fondly remembered as you just reminded me. So, oh my gosh. I loved those commercials and they'd show people like standing in a meadow and they'd be standing like linking and, and hand in hand, like as far as the eye could see, there'd be like a, a line of people. And that was a really inspiring little commercial series. Not like that anymore. There's absolutely nothing inspiring anymore <laughs> about anything. <laughs> not about coke not about anything in fact all that stuff is like poison <laughs> except in 1971 you're like oh coke is the best 
It's amazing. And now we realize we shouldn't be drinking any of this. <laughs> it's toxic. Isn't that funny how that works? All right, I'm putting a little bit of my vintage tape as I should have been doing all along. Um, always forgetting that I have all this good stuff. Um, all this cute stuff that I got in here. Got my, my blood liver pills. My blood and liver pills from drinking too much Coke. <laughs> Michelle had the rounded Panasonic. Hers was red. Bye, Betsy. Oh, the week ahead is 23. Okay. Whew. All right. So hopefully I will get myself caught up to doing recorded videos again. Uh, Melissa had the red one with the rainbow buttons across the top. I didn't have a fancy colored one. Mine was kind of boring and plain. Hi, Sherry Susan. Um, yeah, mine was just a plain black one. I didn't have, I didn't have a fancy one. How'd you guys get fancy ones? I got mine when I was like a kid though. Like, so mine, I was still, let's see, mer. I guess when my mom bought mine, it would have been like 1980, 1981. How fancy were they in 1980, 81? I would say like the, the mid eighties, they started getting cute. Like they got pink, but I don't know. I don't remember them being cute at that young. Maybe you guys just got them in a better era. <laughs> mom, mine was just the plain black. It was nothing fun, but I had a lot of fun with that thing. I was, I was always like, I, I would pretend I was a news reporter. I was a journalist. I would go interview. I interviewed, well, I would try to interview my mom, but she never ever wanted to play along. She was no fun, no fun. Okay, so um, what do I want to do here? Uh, oh, well, how about I put my numbers down? How about, how about I do that? So the first one, Ooh, exactly where the black line is. 1971. What, what? Can you guys believe we are as old as we are? It isn't shocking. That is, it's just not, it's just impossible. It is impossible that we are as old as we are. It is the weirdest, it is the most weirdest surreal thing. I sat there thinking about it all day. It's like, how am I 52 years old? How is that, how is that reality? 52, that's like the age of a grandparent. <laughs> that's crazy. And I know some of you guys are grandparents and I suppose when you are a grandparent that helps solidify it for you, but I am not. So that probably helps it be less real, but, um, yeah, super, super strange, super weird. So there's my 1971. It's not really popping on camera, but it is It is a little bit more obvious than what you can see. I'm also going to put some wood and bellies on here. They kind of stopped making all these wood embellishments. I have this little tray of them. I got very excited. Um, a few summers ago, like four, four or five summers ago. And I was like getting them as much like everywhere I could. And that was already, they were, you know, really hard to get. They weren't something you could just get in the store, but, um, which is a, which is a shame. But that's that's how trends work, huh? Trends come and go. Things things are exciting, and then they run their course, and people move on to other things. Um, let me see. Do I have anything cool and cute? Ooh, here's one of the sticker packs from Corey's curated kits. Let me see. I I have always thought these girls were so 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 cute. I also think they might be transparent. I think they are. 
So I don't know if she will. Okay, she also has a cat, and I'm not a cat. Sorry, I'm not a cat person. So let me. Oh, she's not. She is opaque. Yes. Oh my gosh, how adorable is she? Ah, oh, I'm in love. These little girls are so cute. I love them. I think I'm gonna get, I don't know if I wanna put one on each of them. See, this is when I start going, I don't know what to do. I love them all so much. And then I'm like, should they all have one? None of them, some of them, right? Then it's all about balancing and not having too many, some of them. Awesome, Marie Louise, thank you very much for your purchase. We are um, gonna be launching the next kit very, very soon. It has a new, it has a different theme which I'm excited for different playlists. Have you guys checked out the playlist that came with this one? Okay, I'm in love. I think all of them need one now. Okay, I think they need to be Sitting, sitting or leaning or something short. About this one. Awesome, Melissa. I love it too. Thank you so much for saying that. I these the the little elements. Oh my gosh, these are the best. When I was like hunting for stuff to put in it, I was just blown away with the amount of like variety and the different things that they have available now. It is not like it was when we like when I, we first when I first started in the community, there just wasn't all of this fun vintage stuff that like makes my heart pitter pat. Like my style of stuff, this is my style of stuff. Not So here's an example you guys. These are cute, are they not? I like, but I can handle this in small doses and mixed with this other stuff. Like this is cute, but it's mixed. So I can handle it. This, I, this I can handle. It's, a, it's not too much cute. And it's also a balanced cute. So it's like sophisticated to me because it's like, it's Korean, it's, it's Japanese. This is a style of cute that it has like a foreign flair to it because it's not something that comes from the scrapbook world. It comes from the, you know, it comes from the Asian planner world. It has a totally different connotation to me. It represents traveler's notebooks and Hobonichi's. And it's that style that the girls, you know, that they use in their diaries, their diary stickers. So when I look at them, they're, they're just very different and unique. And I was hoping you guys would really love putting all that kind of cute that just stuff together um so yes yeah, so i have a whole new little theme going for the next kit it also is just fun it has yeah i can't wait can't can't wait can't wait Uh, Miss Andrea, the sticker truck. That's a good question. Mark, do you have um, do you have any ideas about that? No, because uh, I have graphics to get ready for the clubhouse. Um, so the answer, the official answer, is he does doesn't know because we're now heading into that prep mode for the next sum the summer season. So uh, that's kind of putting. Mark's uh, having to go out of town for the amount of time that he did was kind of unexpected and that put us behind. But I'm gonna pack the kits and get them ready so that at least that will get done and be ready. And as soon as he says yes, cause I can get most of that done. So at least that part will be available um, is, is my little kits. I don't know about his stickers, but my kits will be ready. I do want to test leaving it open though and 
The other thing he has been talking about, he just brought it up. The other thing he's been talking about is testing whether or not he can leave the store open and not close it like he has been. You know, you, you guys have to wait for the sticker truck to open. He wants to, to test what happens if I just leave it open and you guys can just place an order when you want. <laughs> Um, in the past, that was kind of um, difficult because there was a lot of people, um, but now our our audience is smaller, and so it's a little bit it's a little bit um, it's more manageable to do that. It wouldn't be as overwhelming, um, so it would be something that could work on like every every three days he would send out orders. You know what I mean? So that's what he wanted to try doing. Hi, Miss Brenda Maldonado. I haven't seen your face in so long. Good to see you. I'm glad to see that you're still around, that you didn't blow away in all those hurricanes, <laughs> that you're still here. Good to see you. So that's what he's up to. He's he's in there, or he's not in there right, well, he is in there right now, but he's he's, contemplating um trying trying something new with the store and letting it be letting it be open which i think will be uh something that you guys would appreciate because then you won't have to ask when is the store going to be open right or this the truck the truck would be here more often than not so but we are going to try that and see what happens. All right, I'm in love. I think these are so cute. I will say though that the numbers are much harder to read than I thought. So I'm gonna actually outline them and see if that's better. That is actually better. I can see them now. You can probably see that one much better. Ooh, if I darken that up, it makes it look like it has, oh yes. On camera, on my, it looks like a shadow, like it's, um. Okay, let me try that again. Yeah, that's way better. Way, way better, way, way better. Okay, now I'm really liking that. Nineteen seventy-one. Those are that's my prompt for this one, and that worked out so good is adding that outline. I'm actually going to add it to that better than this one. And it's okay to be a little bit messy with it, which is what I'm trying to do is be messier. <gasps> that is magic. Okay, problem solved. Here, I'll even show you like you can see. I am, sorry, messy, messy, messy. Not perfect at all. But better, right? Now it really sticks out. <laughs> oh, Michelle, you're so funny. Those of us with the 52 year old eyes, SRS, I, I love all the little, the little star eyed emojis. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and Nita, thanks for letting us know. I agree. When you get paid once a month, I have, I have been paid once a month before too. And you're right. That, that is a, is definitely more challenging, um, to factor all those things in. So, um, I'm hoping that works out, uh, that, that will work out better. It's been, um, I think a bit more difficult to be consistent with our sticker truck than we, than we have liked. Um, but what we have noted is when we have done launches, we have seen that like how many orders we take in is very, um, consistent in terms of how many orders it's like, we hit the same number almost every time. So I think that's kind of what Mark is like looking at. And so knowing that and knowing that if there is not this expectation that we're like Amazon, <laughs> <laughs> that when you place the order, we fulfill it the next day. If that's not, if that's not the expectation and you understand, it might take, you know, 
three days to fill your order, but that's because they're, you know, a chunk of them are going to go out at once, then I think then we would all be happier. We will, we will all be happy together is, I think that's what will end up being the case. Okay. So I have this, this is, uh, the prompt is numbers. Where's my, hmm. Did I pick it up? I did. This is week 21. I do not think I typed out the word numbers because I guessing that I <laughs> figured I would know just looking at it. Okay. I'm second to the last prompt. Okay. Where's my, where's my thing? Okay. Where's my pocket? There it is. Okay, so week 21. Um, so here's that, here's this, and where am I gonna put this? Maybe I put him in the middle. Awesome, one round of arm weight reps done, Jonna says. Now you don't feel bad just sitting here watching. I agree. Do some for me, Jonna. Hi, Brandy. Good to see your little face. Okay, that's a that's a pain. That doesn't want to go in, so let's trim it down a little bit because there's something sticking. Okay. There's 19, there's seven, and then there's the one. Oh my gosh, these turned out so much cuter than I thought. So I think what I wanna do is try and like put, I'm gonna put it on the outside and I think I wanna mount it onto something so it kinda has more presence. So something that's dark. So something like that. There we go. That's too big. Ah, thanks, Melissa, very much. Okay, so week 21. That is super cute. I don't know why I think I love this one so much. This isn't one that I thought was gonna be like, oh my gosh, awesome sauce. <laughs> it seemed pretty benign in the package, but now it's like, I love it so dearly. So there's Miss Iris on one hand. Wow, she's very, and then this is way more like, look at the difference. It's like night and day. She is like in your face, very graphic, very bold. And then this is way more subtle and you know, toned down, <laughs> settle down, indoor voices. This is like outdoor recess. Ah! And this is like, okay, indoor voices. <laughs> All right, um, next and last. Okay, we've come to the end of this juncture. Okay, the last prompt. Do, 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 do. The last prompt is word. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This took me forever to think of a word, just a word. I ran the gamut. And you know what I ended up doing for this? What I ended up doing was messing around with my papers. I just, I finally got tired of thinking of something like a word and I just started um, trying to think of, of a, I just started building the actual uh, paper to work with because this is how I unstick my brain is I start working with my materials. If I can't, um, if my brain can't go to, how do I explain that? If I can't conceptualize something, um, uh, an idea, I will go to my papers. I will go to the resource materials that I'm gonna work with and that almost always does the trick. So here's the pocket 
um, that I'm going to work with. I'm going to use a full size pocket. So my, my big six by eight and can I just, I will demo how this came to be. So I started with this craft paper, love, love, love craft paper. And then I started building upon it. I came across this paper. This is from uh, Prima Marketing. It's one of their new, their little mini books, but they're one of their new collections. And then I started going through everything. And then I found this delicious, really old, paisley pink paisley paisley okay don't remember paisley something this is super old 2014 old and then i found that <laughs> i found that in my stash gorgeous bomb my eyes are like exploding with like yumminess and when i see deliciousness like this i call it eye candy and then that was my word. So I built this, <laughs> I built this and then named it. So it basically named itself. It came up with its own word. So that's how this came to be. So um, yeah, so that's how my last prompt uh, basically named itself. And I need to assemble this, cut it down and put it into this little envelope um, or envelope pocket, pocket. So it is, gorgeous. I could not love this little seed packet more. This is something vintage that I got in a um, one of those ephemera packages you can buy like a, you know, like a pack on Etsy. This was in it. I believe this was in it. Now, if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong about that, the other option that it is, is it came from one of my sweet friends who sent it to me as part of part of several seed packets that were sent to me because that's the other thing I also remember receiving is some vintage seed packets so it's one or the other <laughs> um, but I could not love this seed packet more I might I, I don't want to do anything to it I'm probably gonna scan it so I have it it is the most beautiful collection of like colors assembled it is gorgeous so I just love how this paper here, like it's, I, it's just, oh, all the colors are tonal. They all work together. It's just deliciousness. I feel like putting it on the paper, everything, getting it the right um, size, cutting it down properly is gonna be the challenge. You know, getting it into this uh, pocket properly is the, the biggest challenge. Um, and I probably, I might find like an embellishment to put with it, like just kind of layer it a little better, but I am going to just technically layer everything. And then I have one little prompt here called eye candy. So keeping this, this one very simple, just loving how it, um, how it all just came together really beautifully. Might throw a little ruffle in there. Okay. So. I'm gonna write, Michelle, pink and orange. Ah, delicious. Navy, mm. And that shade of blue, I don't even know the, the name. It feels like a peacock blue to me. Just this, this green. So this right here, my friends, this is very much the color palette for our summer, our summer uh, clubhouse theme. This is very much the color palette. It is just, eye candy it is bright it is just beautiful beautiful i mean all of our color palettes i i obviously that's always my goal is to make them beautiful and they're each their own little personalities but i mean when you have iris it's kind of like your little muse <laughs> you want something that is just like oh that just sings so um with this in mind um this is going to be my um, my goal is trying to fit this piece of craft paper into this pocket. I don't have a crop that matches this size. I'm going to have to eyeball it. Um, so gold scissors. I, uh, you know what, um, Brandy, 
I agree with you. They had them in, uh, I grew up in San Diego and they, they grew wild on the, um, they grew wild on the banks uh, along the freeway. So when it was blooming season, you'd see them everywhere, right? And I remember uh, being a little kid and finding out that the poppy is protected. They're illegal to pick. And I just remember as a kid, somehow that made poppies dangerous. Like, don't get caught picking a poppy. So when I saw poppies, it was like, steer clear of the poppy. They'll get you in trouble. <laughs> so I always had kind of like this weird aversion to poppies. I mean, they're, they're beautiful. They're stunning. They're just like this ballerina of flower. But there's always this like little kind of like scared little tiny little cringe inside of like be be cautious around the poppy because somehow you'll get in trouble if you end up with one <laughs> anyway as a fellow californian i thought you'd find that amusing those poppies man they'll get you in trouble they're illegal <laughs> okay so there's my craft paper all snugly as a bug in there fits perfect i managed to cut that on the right this hopefully won't take me long so um here we have that little strip which i love but it's got this ugly little hole punched in it i'm gonna try to work with that i also have this oddly cut paper it's still got its little um strip at the bottom with the print which i happen to love because i love that font so what i'm gonna do is just clean this up and get all of the um i'm gonna even it out so it it's more intentional and this kind of reminds me of almost like a tab like a like a file tab like this it kind of reminds me of that kind of situation so i'm gonna see if i can I don't know. Let's see if I can make that work. Make it look, sell myself on that idea. So I just want to clean it up. Jen says, I have a similar reaction to the blue bonnets in Texas. Is it, are they illegal? Cause I have seen those blue bonnets. I have driven past them too. And uh, they are quite beautiful. They're like, like a sea of them, right? A sea of blue bonnets. Isn't that from a song? That Dixie Chick song? Okay, Brandy says, yes, I totally agree. Danger, danger. <laughs> there you go, Justine, me too, right? Because every little girl knows you don't pick a poppy. <laughs> you'll, you'll go to jail. Everybody knows that. <laughs> All right, maybe, okay. How about if I, how about if I turn it upside down like that? Is that weird? I did, I've had, I've been holding it this way for so long that I wonder if that is weird now. Cause it, it feels like all of the weirdness is just at least down here. Oh, 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 what, what if I do that and I cover it? What if I bring that down and then kind of like do that? I don't mind it. I don't mind it being weird or odd or, you know, but like, if you're gonna make something weird and odd and like that it has issues, try to make it look like it was intentional and like you you mean for it to be that way. So like see the, how like that looks a little better. If you don't if you don't do it the right way, it just looks kind of messy. See what I'm saying? Like there so here's the hole, here's the odd cut. I I really like that. I try to keep that piece so I'm not looking. If I chop it off and it's not there, then it's just, I don't know. It's not, it's not much fun. So keeping it gives it a little bit of extra something. Now I have this little piece that kind of covers the hole and it bridges. I'm just trying to figure out am I doing enough to bridge these weird pieces. Is it working? Hmm. Now one more time. If I put this up here, is that bringing that pink up there, which is really cool. 
and then I put this here. I don't know, let's experiment. Let's try it out. So I think what I wanted to do with this was kind of like almost put it Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm not... I'm not 100%. Now, I don't know. I'm not saying, um... Okay. I'm not saying that... Is it... Does it need something else? Does it need something more. No, that's not the right fit. What if everything else is tilty? Now, I don't usually go tilty. I, I really love, I love it. I love things that are really nice and These are too much of the same um, color value. Like they're, they're both beigey beige, so they're not really one of them's not really helping the other one stand out. See, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be done so fast. Let me. This will just take me a minute or two. And now. The cool thing about this paper um, is the design in it. The downside of it is it's very beige. So it's not, it's not necessarily a pop. Now this is also beige, but it also has text, um, which goes a long way. I don't hate that. I don't hate this one at all. Let me see. Eye candy. Does it? Does it pop though? Because now, hmm. I don't mind this one. I let me see. Is there something I can add to this to make it more fantastical, though? Um, like that. Keep going. Keep going. Don't give up. I have all these little extra doodad things. Cards. I feel like that needs to get grounded somehow with something. I have um, labels, vintagey stuff, cards. There's a weird. What is this? What if I use that? That wouldn't be terrible because then I could clip it to the top. Let me, what if I do that? What if I do that? Okay, hang on. I really, really love, love this so much. I love these little But I think that's too much. It's like one or the other. Uh, 
Yes, Miss Jen, uh, poppy is the state flower of California and illegal. You are not allowed. Woo. So I love, love, love this little thing, but it is not working for me. So I think I'm gonna just, um, I'm gonna staple it here. Cause stapling is better than just gluing it. And then I will clip it to the top. So how do I make it? How do I make everything? There. <laughs> Just there and done. Okay, so I think I think I will squeeze it a little bit here. And a little bit here. I'll narrow it up a little bit. I probably just am cutting it so crooked, but that's okay. That's what eyeballing is about. Okay, and then um, I'm gonna just kind of tack it because then. I'm gonna clip it here with one of my little gold Japanese clips that I love. And then I have this, which I don't know quite how to get it. Hmm. Oh. Okay. This is what I'm gonna do. I can't quite bring myself to use any kind of glue. So I'm gonna tack it with some Okay, so here's my last week. Week. Oh, did I make a thing for this? Um. Yeah, there it is. Yikes. Not the way I, I wish to do that one, but I am too tired <laughs> to mess with it. How long have I been doing this live stream? Since 11 o'clock this morning. All right, there we go. Bye, Deborah Peterson. I'm sure you've gone long ago. Hey, Miss Jackie. All right, so there, that is a, a very simple. I know that, uh, that's not the definitely not the best I could do but given the circumstances of such a long long live stream my goodness was it four and a half hours oh, I am I'm tired okay let us let us now 
what I said I would do at the beginning of the live stream is I said I would do a flip through to look through everything I have accomplished from week one when we started this back in January. Is that when I started this? Did it really start at the beginning of the year? Why doesn't it seem like that's not so? It seems like I, I don't know. That seems, but I must have. Bye, Eva. Happy birthday again. Okay. All right. So here's, oh, so here's my intro. Let's make pocket art 2023. Here's my little, my whole little binder. So thus far, and then here is week number one. Let's see. So week number one was a moment from my week. That's this little spread. Then we have week number two, which is this one on this side right here. And this was color, which was very much the vintage colors, very Wes Anderson inspired. His color palettes are magnifique, magnifique, magnifique. Collection is week number three. Uh, and this was a collection of honeys. <laughs> week number four is a verse quote or lyric um which was follow me and um uh pretty much the whole thing was the fishers of men this was probably my favorite video also that i made in all of the videos that i've made this one is my most favorite pocket spread um from this one with the little net everything like i just absolutely loved this this was also the most amount of work and yeah beginning to end from now on you'll be fishing for the souls of men um so week number five was experiment which was this spread right here um, i also made its own little standout prompt so this was kind of duplicating an experiment I did during camp and recreating it. Um, and then week six was a list, which was, here's the prompt little card for that. And then this was my experiment, sorry, this was my list, but I did it in a fun little pattern that I did with paper, paper uh, quilting is what I call it. And on various ones, there's a list of some of my um, favorite words in the Bible. And then week number seven is favorite. And this, <laughs> uh, an homage to my father. This is my little 12 year old father. I think he's 12 or 11 or 12 here. And a favorite expression that he used to say to me growing up was rise and shine. And on, so I, on this video, I talk about that and how much it meant to me and how he, oh yes, is very awesome. Love loved this one and then um week number eight so i kind of condensed everything up in this one which i highly recommend you do if you are running short of time and you want to catch up fast you can do an individual pocket per prompt so this was week number eight which was um a letter or number number seven week number nine was a word and the word was saved and then week number 10 was currently and then this was my little list of the things i was doing currently uh week number uh, 11 was a memory and so that was right here that was a memory from camp reset here was my cute little mini me taking a little spa day uh, week number 12 was a mood and this was carefree. Uh, week number 13 was texture and this is this delicious lotiony, gorgeous. Uh, it's like a lotion texture in the background. It's kind of hard to read on camera, but oh my gosh, every time I see it, I'm like, oh, I'm ready for spa day. <laughs> I'm, re I'm ready for a mask. <laughs> and then uh, this would be week 14. Did I say that week 13? Let's see week 13 pattern or texture week 14 so here's my first repeat and this would have been uh that really epic uh childhood memories um a moment from my week was 
Pinterest and I talked all about this. This is the last video that I did on this channel about my pockets. And then today, picking up today, here is my week 15 and this is about color. This lovely pink green combo, which I have just been absolutely loving. There it is. And then um, week 16, a collection. These are the little mini me's I made uh, a couple summers ago. All, all their little silver haired glory. And then week 17 um, is verse quote or lyrics. So you can't really see it very well on camera, but I put part of a verse here. The other part hopefully will end up in the white pen ink as soon as I can make it work. And then this is two different photos. You guys watch me bring them together. This is a day daylight video and a nighttime video that I cut and brought them together to create two different videos or two different pictures into one. Um, and then this was experiment and I did a little mini lesson in showing you guys different ways to crop magazine photos, but you can do it with any kind of photo to give you completely different, interesting crops. And then furthering that along, you can crop the photo out further of its background and then lay it on top of completely different patterns and get something entirely unique and special and then create these interesting layouts that are just exclusively yours so this was experiment week 18 then we are at week 19 which is a list we're back to that and eventually i will have all of the these specific ones completed and then week 20 is favorite and this is a little homage to Miss Iris Appel who is a really amazing inspiration and she's been on my mind a lot as I've been planning our summer content um, and then as we look ahead to the fabulous little silver haired ladies that we will be in the future some of us are already there and then week 21 is a number again and that's number 1971 the year I was born Doo -doo -doo -doo. and then week 22 which is this week and that is uh, the word, it was word, and I ended up, uh, the word for me ended up being eye candy, which is what this color combination ended up just giving me all the feels, just so delicious and yummy. And so now next week uh, is week 23, and that will be for us, will be currently. So next week, your prompt for the week is currently. What will that be? So I have caught myself up. That was eight weeks <laughs> of crafting um all at once and i didn't i didn't phone it in i did some whole spreads for a prompt versus just you know because always if you are just trying to get it done don't don't feel like you can't just do a pocket per prompt there's nothing wrong with that but i really 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 wanted to give you guys some good ideas um i know it was a really long live so that's kind of a lot of <laughs> that's a lot of time to get some ideas out of it but hopefully you also managed to do some crafting yourself or got some of your own projects done while you were putting me on in the background and also got to hang out with your friends because many of you guys have been part of the community for a long time so it's fun to hang out with friends and and a reminder, um, thank you, Miss Jonna. And a reminder that the clubhouse, the First Love Club house, will be opening its doors um, July 1st to open up for the new season. And we will be having um, a very, very one of a kind, unique season this summer that will be a very different camp experience. It is more like glamping. It is a glamping experience, unlike the kind of retro camp um, that we have done in the past. It has got a very fun, it's gonna be super fun, just as like the same ch ch childlike imagination, the same youthful, young at heart. We're gonna do art projects um, and we're gonna have a fun optional workshop. We're gonna do um, fun little challenges, badges, all the, all those little fun things that we, you know, do, but there will be a fun spin on it this time that is very unique. So, hey, Miss Linda. Hello, hello. So, thank you, Miss Chris. Whew. 
So, <laughs> Jonna says, I got three rounds of arm training in. So, hi, Miss Kim. Uh, so, oh, and I didn't kill one glue stick because I didn't get one of them, one of them finished enough. Let me see. So one of them was pretty dry, though. So, I might just throw that one out because it was kind of a, it was not, it was a kind of a loser glue stick to begin with. And it wasn't the best glue stick for the job. So I feel like I have two almost dead glue sticks, but there's still a little life. They're still hanging in there. So I won't, I will not throw them out yet. So being almost four o'clock, this was a five hour live. <laughs> that doesn't scare me. That doesn't scare me. I can do, I can do a five hour live. Three more hours to get a full I, yeah, three, I can do three more hours. Shush. So I appreciate how many of you guys stuck with me all this time, listening to me, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's where the real work comes in. <laughs> so thank you. Um, I hope I kept you company while you were doing something around the house or you know, maybe you just had some time off, so it was just fun to have someone to hang out with. Um, I know that that's very much what I did before I had Mr. Crafty in my life, is I had that for, I had that for company. So, um, you are so welcome, Cyan. It was really good to see your little face again. I was really very, very touched to see so many little faces. I love doing a live stream on the Reset Girl channel. Um, because I just don't get to see all you guys um, that are not in the clubhouse unless I do. And doing it so early on a Saturday meant I got to see uh, my international friends, which has been a long time. But I, I remember your little faces. I remember. <laughs> I remember you guys being part of the community. So it, thank you very much for honoring me with your time and your presence. It has been delightful. Um, and I hope that if you weren't doing the pocket art challenge that you might feel inspired to join in because it's really easy to catch up or you don't even have to. You can just jump in where you feel like it. You don't even have to catch up if you don't want to. You can do as little or as much as you want. It's pretty easy as you saw. I mean, it's really up to you how you interpret things and you can, um, I, there's, we are, we're at 22 prompts. You could do 22 pockets. You could do one prompt per pocket and be done. You don't have to make things in plastic pockets. You can uh, create the look of a pocket by just cutting your papers into the, these pocket shapes and just doing them on paper pages. They don't actually have to be in the plastic if you don't care for that look um, or don't wanna spend the money. If they're not already in your stash, I just, I have a lot to use up and as a lot of people do, cause I was, I had pocket fever at one point. So I was, <laughs> I bought up a lot of pockets, um, but it, yeah. So however you want to adapt to it, if you would like to do it. So there you go. Tracy says you, you, I kept you company while you worked on your daughter's wedding album. <laughs> so awesome. That's wonderful. You are welcome, Miss Mary. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for joining me, Miss Nita. And uh, Jonna, I'm glad that I could help you make exercise less horrible. <laughs> so, um, thank you, Miss Sherry. So, I miss your little faces, you guys. I know we don't, we're not seeing each other as much because there hasn't been Bible time. And, um, I've just been doing stuff in the clubhouse and that's not as often as, you know, either. So. Uh, but for those of you in the clubhouse, know that tomorrow there is a live stream at two o'clock. It is a girlfriend gathering. So my two o'clock, my time, Pacific standard time. So heads up on that, that we are doing that. And Annalise, thank you very much for joining us from Belgium. That is really wonderful that you joined, joined me today. And I'm glad that you had fun. I'm glad you had fun. So hopefully I will be able to get put, putting out, getting back on schedule to be putting out our regular videos. Thank you so much for watching my videos. And if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, which I'm pretty sure you are if you were watching the live stream because that's how you knew I was having a live stream. But if you aren't subscribed, 
be sure to subscribe. I would appreciate it. Also, if you don't mind giving my video a thumbs up before you leave, that would be also awesome. Um, if you have any feedback on like what you'd like to see on this channel, I'd love to hear it. Please let me know. Always open to hearing feedback. Um, but thank you for, <laughs> I'm signing off, Miss Julie, don't worry. Um, but I, uh, I'm very appreciative of you guys spending time with me and uh, supporting me and cheering me on as I got through <laughs> five hours of crafting today. So it was a delight. Um, it was a delight, Jonna, right back at you. So love your little faces on, on that one. Um, Linda, I don't have an answer uh, for that question. I really don't know. Um, I don't know the answer. I wish I could tell you, but I don't know. Um, so if you're in the clubhouse tomorrow, check the calendar. Just double check that because I could be wrong on time and all that good stuff. Um, and then I will see you guys. I'll see you guys around. I'll hopefully be back to my regular uploading schedule. And thank you again. Um, I pray that you have a wonderful, blessed week. And I will see you again really soon. Love your little faces, you guys. Bye, everybody.